What's happening, lids? We're here to tell you about our Patreon membership that starts from just three quid a month. It is the biggest Patreon in the UK and the fastest growing Patreon on planet Earth, kids. Dan, why is that? You get early access to the public episode. Pubes get it on Monday. You can get it up to 48 hours early. Um, and on top of that, let me just interrupt you there and say you don't get any adverts on the early access. The YouTube adverts that sort of interrupt the show for the public people. If you watch it via the Patreon app, the adverts aren't there. You get an advert-free early access on top of your bonus episode every single week and all of the specials that we drop one of every single month. Dan, list them. The Ghost Hunt. The Ghost Hunt 2. We've done so many lock-ins and they've got more drunk and more ridiculous and we've got more planned. The we've... roast of Adam and Dan, oh. blind date. This is all part of the Patreon membership. Everyone from three quid to five to ten, even if you sign up for the lowest tier, you get all the bonus content. People get early access to tickets as well. It's the only do... way It's the only way to see us live, basically. Yeah. If you're not a patron, you're not going to get to buy tickets to see us live. Apart from the arena show, which is on sale right now. It's on sale publicly. You can get tickets to gigs and tours. Dot com Friday the 9th of December, we change the UK and worldwide podcast game by throwing the biggest ever podcast party at the Echo Arena. It's not the Echo Arena anymore, it's the MS Bank Arena, but I don't care. I'm old school. Uh, you can get them right now. Tickets are still on sale. Come and join us for the biggest night of this podcast and all of our lives. Do you know who got the best tickets for that? Patreons, because it was on there first. Patreon.com slash have a word pod. Enjoyed the episode, you filthy animals. Go ahead. Wag Wag Leads, you're listening to the funniest podcast in the game with Adam, Dan, Sensei Kal, and Finn. This is the one and only Have a Word. Brought to you by Manscaped.com, the very best in below the belt men's grooming. Go, Ed, get on me. Oh, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna. Sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Hey, um, uh, oh, lad, it's a hotter, hotter time, isn't it? I so, slept absolutely bollocko last night with me I tower know. fan pointed at me cock. I know. I it's a watched. great day for a salad. A great day for a salad. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> great day for a salad. You want a hot food because it's already hot outside. Yeah, cold ham. And an egg. Oh, it's so... My garden's all dried up, like... <laughs> Why didn't you water me, Dan? Because I'm busy. No, you're not. I am. No, you're not. <laughs> I do two podcasts a week. <laughs> and I've done t uh, three previews this week. <laughs> I nearly whinged at Laura about the garden and then knew that I would have got fucking murked at where I stood. She does everything in the house. I proper like stuff. The absolute audacity of white men. Sorry, sister. <laughs> la. La. I really forget. Sometimes, I don't know if you missed the episode where Adam started identifying as a black woman. But since then, he's really kept me keen on, like, my white privilege. Thank yeah. you, yeah. Yolanda. No, Shaniqua. Oh, Shaniqua Rowe. <laughs> my name's Shaniqua, Shaniqua Rowe. Y'all come down, see me sometime. <laughs> Fucking hell. Shaniqua. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, yeah, you can't ask Laura to do the garden. That no, is your, that, no. That is your job. No, I've got a gardener, but I think he's, I don't think, I think he's high a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he just gives off the vibe. I was like, he's called Neil and he's dead sound, but he's not the 100% there. <laughs> and you know what? If I had a job as a gardener, maybe I'd be high as well. He just turns, he's like, oh, right, Dan. Oh, lovely no, colours. I'm like, what? He's probably not what high. I was like, ooh, they're melting. He's probably not high because he's a gardener. He's probably a gardener because he's always high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. if you're genuinely a big pothead, if you're fucking Ronnie O'Possesson, right? <laughs> if you're always Potterson. baked, then you want to do an outdoor job so you can pot on the job. Yeah, I'll give you that. This is absolutely sound reasoning. If this all goes to shit and the mortgage is paid off, all Danny's gardening service, you ri you text him, I'll get a burner. <laughs> like I'm a dealer. What do you need doing? Some weeding. Oh, I bet you do. Um, yeah, I could see that. Just Wait, do two bits of gardening a week. Number? Can I have his phone number? I need a, I need a point. You need a what? A point, Neil and no Neil. He's a Neil, isn't he? It's a free point for me. All oh, right, Neil and no Neil. Yeah. He's, um, I don't know if he'd answer. He'd be like, hello, what's this? Where's so he, he from? He, he's from down south. Is he? Yeah, he's on the run. <laughs> 
I think he's in witness oh, relocation. Oh, <laughs> They've got me. It's a fucking good impression. <laughs> so he came this morning. <laughs> your garden sounds like that. I, but, <laughs> I, 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 oh, I want to get a... Your tulips are fucking beautiful. Um, it's not Why's far off. It's not Call far. him now and then we're going to point. He's always on the phone. <laughs> he's listening to podcasts. He stops what he's doing. He's like, oh, yeah, they're going to be lovely. <laughs> And then I've seen him answer the phone and it looks like a total surprise at the phones that he's like, <laughs> hello? <laughs> oh yeah, gardening. <laughs> oh yeah, fuck, I do it. Yeah. <laughs> I love him. I booked him. Do you remember when did I go to Mallorca on my own? Last week? No, <gasps> third week of June, wasn't it? Oh. That's when I booked him to do gardening. Yeah. He turned up today. <laughs> it's the middle of July. That's when he had his next availability. I Sorry, like, Danny, I missed me alarm, oh, darling. Bloody hell. <laughs> I just remembered it in a fucking favour dream. Where did you find him? <laughs> uh, the internet. <laughs> what bit of the internet? I googled <laughs> gaycockneygardeners.com. I know, but we we now own that. I've had issues. A thousand percent. What is it called? Gay. In the future, we own Gay Cockney Garden. Oh Gardeners. my god! <laughs> Look at your tulips. Oh. <laughs> Do you usually garden with your cock out? <laughs> In this weather, why not? Um, yeah well the thing is with go four minutes <laughs> the thing is we're going on the internet looking oh now we're in the danger zone now listen to me now boy we're in the danger zone oh no a lovely day for that a driveway um you just i've had problems with this before i've gone on going i'm a feckless twat.com have you been on i'm a feckless twat.com i spent a lot of time on that could you come and help me i did a real ban and um, yeah, you can get a you can get a certain type of character who I don't really want doing any landscaping for me. Okay, we know what I'm saying. Let's not make me say it. I don't. Gay Cockney Gardener, way more fun. Isn't it? <laughs> it is way more from fun. the alternative. I think I want to pay that now. You know. Oh. You know, oh my god! All right, yeah. <laughs> you wanted me third week of June. Here I'm in July. <laughs> At least it's the same season, babes. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to hire a handyman. And oh, please hire Neil. It'd be great. <laughs> does he Come do? You, does he put curtain poles on? He'll try. I've given you a handyman. <laughs> Fuck. What? I've given you a handyman. Yeah, I'll probably. I will contact him. Yeah. I've just come to sounded like a gay Jordy. I've given you a handyman. <laughs> <laughs> you finished. I'll owe me Newcastle a weird shirt. You <laughs> bastard. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to decorate me flat. Even though I rent it. I think I'm gonna. It's just a bit too bright. Is that how bored you are? <laughs> oh my god! Adam god. was in Discord last night. Yeah, that's how bored he was yesterday. Adam, are you gonna <laughs> organise <laughs> and perform another tour before my tour? A possible because it's embarrassing that <laughs> if hot water was open last night, I'd have done both shows <laughs> and I'd have done new material. I swear to God. So right, I'm quite bad. Right, as we've already discussed on this week's Patreon, which by the way was a belter and if you're not signed up you should have go you should go back and watch it the most recent oh, patron it was good listen i am not good at being at doing nothing i'm certainly not good at doing nothing on my own right i'm quite good at doing nothing with company i think if, if me and you just sat around watching telly i can enjoy that yeah. if i'm doing it with a, a, a lady or a friend or even go to my cousins and sit with them i can do it a lady. on my own i cannot Cope. I can't, right? I swear so the opposite. So, I know, right? So yesterday, I had the full day off, oh. right? Oh, no podcast, no gig, no nothing. I could have got a lot of admin done, but I thought, nah, right? Admin, you don't need to do admin. Live your life. So I thought, you know what? Shut up, let's just have, let's try and have a day of nothing and, and enjoy it, right? <laughs> just try. <laughs> so I got No up. booze. Try not to booze. No booze. Just a day of... Just for the record, that was a unwanted hand touch there. It happens every <laughs> six episodes. Just happen again. So I woke up. I gave myself like an hour just milling around, laying around, not doing much. Got myself a shower, ready for the day. Walked to my favourite little breakfast restaurant uh, and got myself an English breakfast tea and a bacon butty. Had a little mill around town. Bought an absolute bastard of an at because me and Carl are going to see Jerry Cinnamon at the a weekend. Boonie. He bought himself a boonie. A oh. boonie? Yeah, yeah. it's like so a fishing hat. Oh, nice. It's, it's got a, it's got a, it's got a, uh, it's a got lace. A string under it. It's rounded, soft material. You want to see it? You can slide it's it in. A fishing hat. A boonie, they're called. A boonie. A boonie. A couple cool. of boonies. A couple of boonies. A fucking couple of boonies in this way. Fuck, you know. Right? Is that where we're at? 
Yeah. I had a boonie when I went on. Is that Fashion Arbor? No, you had a bucket hat. No, I had a boonie as well. No, not that's but the other holiday I went on. Right, cool. All I'm saying is, have you put have you said that picture in? Yeah. That's, that's what remember. Neil the Gardener looks like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Fucking you no, know, warm, innit? On your head. <laughs> Get this on. Who's to play cricket? <laughs> yeah, it's like a umpire's hat. Absolutely. So bought that. Uh, bought a book. Bought a new book. I haven't finished the last one yet, but you know, you can have two books going at the same time, can't you? No. Nope. Slag. What? You can't have two books going at the same time. You can if they're different books. No, you can if you're not reading one of them. That's dead easy, yeah. What? You can have started a book. <laughs> You've probably got about a thousand books on the go. <laughs> really, throughout your life. No, I've got two books and like 998 magazines. Yeah, but you're okay. close. Match. Hey, if you're doing ADHD bingo, your fungi is getting fucking <laughs> sore, right? Dab, 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 dab. Like, this is off the charts for ADHD Adam bingo. There's uh, a comedian I met a couple of years ago called Maurice Gowan, right? She's dead sound, really funny. She was very new, and she still is, like, doing stand-up and stuff, but, you know, she's a, a, an open spot. I met her, she was doing a trial to Hot Water a few years ago. Um, I don't know whether she's still with the guy she was with at the time, but he was a comic as well. He's brilliant. He's the one I showed you the other day. Yeah. Uh, Mike Rice. Yeah. Uh, the Irish lad who was on Vittorio's podcast. Oh, who God. we got to get on here. Got to get that guy on. Fuck me, that's funny. She's written a book Shit called... in your mouth! She's written a book called Trouble, which is about sort of... It's a, her memoir of having a severely alcoholic parent who eventually killed himself. Um, and I was really enjoying it and had to put it down because it, it was just a bit too... Enjoying it? No, I was enjoying it as a book, not like, oh, <laughs> yes, look how fucking shit your life yeah, was. Yeah, not like a roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> like but it you was, can enjoy it by being enthralled. enthralled. Yes. It was so unbelievably recognisable for me and exactly the same lived experience. It was, I just had to stop for a bit. So I was like, right. That wasn't a surprise though, was it? God, this fucking resonates with me. No, it no. was, it was, we're talking about like situations oh, right, that yeah. you could have literally gone, Right, change that name from Maurice Gowan to Adam Rowe and oh, change right. that from her dad to my mum. And the story is almost... Like haunting, almost. Ridiculous. So I I bought the book from Waterstones and I went and sat outside the clubhouse. Oh, nice. Top of Liverpool 1. Got myself a, a lemonade. and just Shivas Park. Yeah, just started reading the book. I had to put that down. Thought, you know what? I could cook tonight for the first time in my flat, but I'm a bit hungry now. And these sell belly pork. So I got some belly pork. Ooh. Ate that. And then I was like, right, I'll, I'll go home. Put Bill Bear's new special on. Absolutely fucking peak Bill Bear. It's great. Who was going to special? At yeah, Red Rocks in Denver. Def, Denver. Outdoors, Netflix. nine and a half thousand people. On the Netflix? On Netflix. Yeah. What? Shit. Right, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Watched all of that, which is, it's an hour and a half. It's not just an hour long special. It's an hour and 25 minutes. Absolute fire. You'll fucking love it. I then watched Dave Chappelle's acceptance speech. Oh, yes. You I saw, that? I, I, it came on Netflix yesterday morning. So the Duke Ellington School of Arts in Washington, uh, how they, they wanted to name their theatre space after Dave, the Dave Chappelle Theatre. Um, he was given that honour and he spoke at the school an acceptance speech. It's 40 minutes. <laughs> His acceptance don't. speech is longer than Chris Stefano's special. Yeah. <laughs> and... That's brilliant as well. So I just want to recount that whole day to you, right? Yeah. I've gone it's into- a good day. Good I woke day. up late. No, well, wait, right? I woke up late. I woke up at half 11. I think I got in the shower at one o'clock and I left the house maybe half one, something like that. Went and got a late breakfast, yeah. brunch. I went, walked around all the shops in town, trying hats on, right? Eventually bought a hat, bought a book, Why we read a good chunk well, of the book, yeah, cool. ate out for dinner, yeah. Went home, watched two Netflix specials, right. and it was still only about seven o'clock. And honestly, I just didn't know. I, I don't know what to do with all this time. Gardening. Yeah, I'm going to end up like being a gardener, doing a bit of parts, getting in ridiculous shape. I need a focus. And if Hot Water was open last night, I'd have absolutely gone I've down. got one. Open your emails. What? Could have opened an email. No. Boring. No. Boring, no. Carl. No. Um, it's hobby time, isn't it? Uh, you're just going to start getting it. I'm going to say hobby, then you'll get bored of it. Do you masturbate? You, you, your hobby is your job. To masturbate? Um, yes. Excuse me, what? I had this conversation with um, <laughs> Christian Knowles recently. He was essentially, at the minute, my agent's boss. Like, he runs the company that my agent represents me at. He was like, oh, what, what hobby? What, what are you going to do when it's all over? And I was like, well, the thing is, for me, comedy is my job, but it's also my hobby. So, like, when I've got to do a gig... When I'm on tour, sometimes I'm a bit like, oh, I've got to go here and got to do that gig. 
when I've got a day off and I just get to go to hot water and talk shit freely and not, that's my hobby. Okay. And the more enjoyable side of it. Should we throw some suggestions out for Adam's ho- hobbies? Ooh. Uh, water polo. Water polo. <laughs> Why not? Okay. Taxidermy. I mean, I'm not 100% what it is. Get a swimming bath. Get, take a weapon. Go to swimming bath. Yeah. Taxidermy. Taxidermy be good. A plique. Again, I'm saying words I'm not convinced about the meaning of. Ladies hockey. Um, I think I'm going to get ripped, learn another language and play the guitar. <laughs> uh, you will do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. None of them. Not even... Not even a quarter of one of them. <laughs> what language are you going to learn? What? What language are you... We said this a few weeks... Yeah, we've started. already done it. He's the new Carlos Santana. He's decided it's happening. He's getting ripped. He's going to be Spanish. <laughs> oh, la, 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 la. oh, no, that's Shakira. None of them are going to happen. Is that why you texted last night? We were talking about our new venture because you were that bored. You wanted to do a bit of admin. Yeah, because that's not admin to me. Yeah, it's fun. That's excitement. So, should something we talk to, about that? Something to yeah. do, though. Yes. Um... Oh, this is going to be exciting. Me and Carl, for the World Cup, are going to launch... Sportscast. A sportscast. A football podcast that we may occasionally hint on MMA and NFL as well. Yeah. Because you you love MMA. Yeah. And I like it. Yes. And I love the NFL, and you like it. Yes. But we both love footy. So there might be a couple of other sports things. Mainly footy for the World Cup. Well, the plan is to, dip, polo? to dip our okay. toe into sportscast and, and using the World Cup to do that. If it goes well... Then we'll continue it throughout. Well, if it goes well, we're going to carry on and do like we'll do it regularly, like we do with this. Um, and if there's ever any sort of Patreon content of it, we'll it'll all just go on the Have a Word Patreon. It'll just be a new wing of the Have a Word world. It's not Have a Word, but it's it's under the bracket, and yeah, all yeah, it's all going to go there. So you still, if you if you're a Patreon of this, you're still going to see it all. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just more stuff. Just more but, content. Um. Great. I know a lot of people will be very excited about that. And just to sort of soft launch that, we'll get it all branded and stuff. We haven't got a proper title for it yet. We're sort of milling between Ooh, a couple of things. What are we going to go with there? Well, I, I want to... It's too long, so we're not going to use this. Um, I wanted to call it something along the lines of we don't know what we're talking about. Because a lot with a lot of footy, this is the reason it took me so long to start a footy thing. The amount of angry people online when you they disagree with one thing on it's just like oh you don't even know what you're talking about like yeah we we it's literally called that. Especially so. the World Cup, it's gonna be like oh this Peruvian fullback looks great here. Oh yeah, you're score. telling me I'm a rugby league head, mate. Yeah, you. Know. <laughs> it's the same, same. You know, Saints Twitter gets pretty hashtag. Maybe you, we could do C-O-Y-S. rugby corner every week with you. Oh, uh, rugby league corner. Yeah, fair enough. Come to me. I'm a <laughs> I'm a league head. I'm a rugby league head. What we're gonna well, have? I'm wearing my Saints training top, you know, because it was Magic Weekend the last weekend. Played a big game against... Did he win? We, yes. We beat yeah, Wigan. We, we beat won. the Wigan we Wigers. But this week, <laughs> to sort of soft launch the sports stuff, me and Carl are going to set up an official have a word fantasy Premier League. And for the first time ever, we are both committing to taking it seriously for the full season. Good. You haven't got anything else to do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that the whole season. Wait, you fucking are. Yeah, yeah. I'll be on you every week. So have you done your team for the weekend? Yeah, yeah. Hang I, on. You have to do... What's, what's happening in fantasy now? You have to do your team for the weekend? Well, if Lukaku's injured, even though he's left the league... Oh, do you... Do, oh, you have to take him out. Yeah. You'd have to take him out now. He's not in the Premier League. But yeah, yeah you have to manage your team. Um, But yeah, people have been asking for a very long time for me and Carl to do uh, something to do with footy or sports. So we are going to launch it for the World Cup and see how it goes. And if it goes well for that period of time... Which it will probably be, you know, there'll be a big fucking rush of it. It'll probably be more than once a week during the World Cup because the games come thick and fast. But then after that, we might carry on a, a weekly sports podcast. Yes, there'll be some familiar faces, you'll see. There's going to be like asides, like there's going to be a, a, an odds bit where someone's going to try and help you with uh, maybe some uh, betting on the World Cup. Um, oh, yeah, cool. It's going to be maybe us going out and people doing just stuff. People are just buying to you two talking about sport. I don't think, it, I don't think you need... Like, if you set your stall out as it's you two talking about st- sport, I think you can take it where you want. Well, they'll, you remember, they'll go with you. Do you remember Badil and Skinner years ago for the World Cup? Oh, my God. The ITV show. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. I remember it before that when it was... Oh, my unplanned. God. Unplanned. Badil fu- and Skinner unplanned, yeah. No. What was it called? With Stato. Holy shit. Oh, I'm what? so annoyed that I've forgotten the... And they had Stato come on. It was so good. Fantasy World Cup. Um, the original Badil and Skinner football show. Anders, Angus Lochran. He was the stato. Um, what was it called? 
Um, they set it out in the flat. It was so beautifully done. Fantasy Football League, was it? Was it just Fantasy Football? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure, it was called something else. Yeah, anyway. Fantasy Football League, it was called. Oh, but they, they, re- they recreated famous goals from the past on like a five-a-side pitch. It's very well done. Yeah, but like, so it's going to be like, it's going to be like that. It's going to be, um, it's going to be fun as, uh, as well as, you know, we, we know what we're talking about with football a little bit. It's going to be good. Yeah. So there we go. That, that's a, a little project. November, uh, December, that'll be obviously through the World Cup. So you're going to launch it in the build-up to the World Cup with like a preview show? Probably, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be in the new studio, so it's going to look amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be great. Yes. Look how I'm being very complimentary without committing to any work. <laughs> you should do that. <laughs> that sounds brilliant. I'll be on tour. But have a great time. If it's, that's going to be quality. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Also, you you know, it's all the, the thing with sport, like... I'm tempted to do a rugby league podcast because obviously I live and breathe it. Don't you know? show about it. Do not show. Sometimes I'm on the pod and I'm like, Dan, tone it down a little bit, yeah? Um, but I am tempted to do an NFL podcast and then you're like, I just this is so much. This is so going so good. And then I've got everything at home, like a dry-ass garden with a fucking hippie stone watering one plant and nothing else. Like, But I do see the temptation of having... Because with us, we just chat shit and we chat our lives. But to have something to actually cement and discuss, and then you can go away off there and, like, it can end up wherever you want it to be. To have that focus, I think, would be great. Yes. That's going to be cool. Uh, yeah, but I do... I, I do I, I've spoke extensively now with my personal trainer, and we're, we're pretty sure <laughs> we're definitely going to maybe do something. <laughs> I told you on this week's Patreon, I want to yeah. get ripped. Uh, I spoke to... There's a gym in my building, which is wonderful. Um, and I spoke to the building people and said, can my personal trainer train me in the building? He's got to get a flat. So you've got you've had to buy your personal trainer a flat. But do you know what it'll be worth it? Have yeah, you got, yeah, a, it's have you got a guitar? Investment. What? Have you got a guitar? Yeah, that's that's not your guitar. What? That's have a word, guitar. Yeah. It says I own the company, so I can borrow the guitar. fuck off Elton John, on it? <laughs> it does, yeah. That'll make it sound better. Have you seen the Naked Cowboy in uh, Times Square in New York? Yeah. Yeah, Adam's going to be the Scouse version of it. <laughs> have you seen the, the naked uh, red Indian of the field one? Have you seen the hairy naked Scouser? <laughs> I'm the only gay Eskimo. No, he's singing in Spanish. He's learned Spanish now. By this point, I'm la only gay Eskimo. No, that was just an accent, wasn't it? Oh yeah, you're right. Sorry, <laughs> Jonas the Fire Only Thanks gay Eskimos that, in Spanish. Spanish. Only gay Eskimo in Spanish. Survey says. Is the telly on? Go. Yes. Oh. Uh, it, need, it didn't come on. Tell us on. Oh, there we go. You nailed it. <laughs> the only gay Eskimo about? in Just Spanish is solo esquimal gay. <laughs> wow, the Spanish. Mi solo esquimal gay. The um, mi solo esquimal gay. Gay in Spanish. Mi solo is esquimal gay up the ass. <laughs> The Spanish are so homophobic, they won't even do a Spanish word for gay. Yeah, it's, it's esquimal. <laughs> it's solo esquimal gay. I would love you to do learn Spanish and only speak it on the podcast and watch it. And I fall off. I'm the only gay esquimo. Is sola unica esquimal gay. <laughs> sola unica esquimal gay. Sola unica esquimal gay. <laughs> So la unique es que mal gay up the ass. <laughs> love code switching there. A lovely little ad on there. <laughs> so have you actually managed to go this whole time without making did you nearly make the first meal? The first supper? I'm gonna cook for the first time tomorrow. What? I'm busy all day today. I've got to do this. I've got to go to hot water and uh, film a bit of stand up for the cultural appropriation thing. I'm coming towards the end of. Uh, but tomorrow, I'm off and I'm going to cook. So easy doing cultural appropriation. Cook stuff. tomorrow. When yeah, yeah. Cook. And you're a black woman. Um, have you written the stuff for the cultural appropriation bits? I've, I've thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I have. Yeah, it's had no time except for yesterday. No, I have. I've, I've put some bullet points together. Yeah. Oh, the bullet points. That's, that's it's my process. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. I give you um, that. Question going back to something you said before when we were talking about your fucking gardener, you know? Yeah. Fucking gay Larry with his tulip loving. Neil. Uh, <laughs> Neil, sorry. <laughs> um, <coughs> we spoke about this a long time ago, right? But things have changed a lot since then. And, you know, we've, we've ridden this high ass, have a weird wave. If this went to shit, right? And comedy's gone. 
What's your go-to job now? What would oh, you try and do? Oh, yeah. Because gardening's not a bad one, is it? People have gardens. They need gardeners. People have got gardens. So, what? when's it going to shit? Next we, week. Next week. Because it's literally loud. Uh, please don't use this as foreshadowing in some weird way. <laughs> <laughs> but next week, it's gone. That would be a real kicker, you know, because I've bought cars like we're still going to be earning for the next two years. <laughs> uh, what am I going to do next week? Sell a Z4. Uh, um, yet, yeah, I don't know if you can't go to, I can't go back to comedy. No. I can't do gigs. Do you know, that would be hard anyway. What was that James line you used in the... Uh, if I hadn't seen such riches, I could live with being poor. <laughs> yes. I just There is an element of that. You mean in my stand-up show? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know in Chester? Yeah, was it you, Chester? You said it on the pod. And the guy went, that's a song. That's a line from a James song, you know. <laughs> great. Great. Thank you. It's brilliant. <laughs> so good, because I wondered why it was in my head. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it in your head. I think you'd be a good teacher. I think teaching is like comedy except not as much fun and you can't say one, two, three, shut the fuck up. I just, um, I'm not a, I think I'd, there'd be murders. Like I, kids are so fucking annoying. High school? Oh my God, no. Year 11. No way. Being a history teacher for year fucking nine. Oh, those little bastards. They've all got fucking knives. Oh, Go to girls' all school. Them. All of them. It's a girl's school. You're 11. It's a girl's school. Yeah, you know, I get brilliant. I get stabbed by a fucking girl. <laughs> <laughs> Which would be my luck, wouldn't it? Should go on fucking gardening. Teaching in London. <laughs> um, uh, I, I'd like to be that dude that works on the parasail. <laughs> oh, that's where I go. <laughs> I go weird old drunken British guy on a beach somewhere. Dance parasailing. Oh, yeah, I'd be that cunt. Dance, you strapped in. I'd be in. so fucking hammered. I don't feel like strapped in. Don't worry about that. it will be fucking fine. It's only bits of water. Slap it with your face. Tense changed <laughs> for no reason. Yeah, but I'm grizzled by then, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, I'd be one of those weird old beach bum cunts, just selling parasail and fucking jet ski rides. You could be the fella who uh, like controls this patch of um, loungers, <laughs> <laughs> like a pimp, yeah. like a pimp. He got lounges. fucking very defensive that day, didn't he? He also got fucking nutmegged. Watch out for that. Yeah. On the rugby league special where we went to Lorette de Mar. And rugby. Uh, and we went to the, uh, yeah, the rugby. I nutmegged him and he got very, very, very sad. Didn't yeah. he? And very aggressive. Yeah, he tried to do some banter with Two like, sausages, didn't he? Keep-ups yeah. and whatnot. Right in the knee. He was like, oh, you're shit at He was like, right, okay. I megged him, run away, celebrating. And he was like, oh, no, let's have it. And we also had an American football. This guy's like 58 years old. He's been a beat. He's been doing that job for so long. Like, he was... Different ethnicity. He looked like a couch. Like, yeah. He was just, he was Spanish, but he's all he's ever done is been on the beach for the whole of the summer. And he'd gone so many tones of, like, Spanish <laughs> d- mahogany brown. Yeah. And, he, was, and it, he wasn't being unfriendly initially. He was being f- normal. But senor, then, senor, then, you pay me for the dead. He was being... <laughs> that was him. Not like that. Senora, senor, a ball, a ball you start, have six beds. A ball started being thrown around. And he was like, yes, and now we play. And basically, Carl had a fuck around with him and, and megged him, and he got dead annoyed. Yeah. At one point, I was throwing the American football, and he was like, hey, he, he went to throw it to me, and then I'll bat it down yeah, yeah. onto his head. I was like, oh, you've not met Carl. He'll fight you. <laughs> he got and megged. Then, and then that will be amazing for the fucking Patreon special. So we are, <laughs> Um, uh, I might go kibbutz. I don't even know what I can say kibbutz. I don't even know what that is. Is that like a fucking a boat in Israel or something or Tel Aviv? Fuck's kibbutz. A kibbutz. I don't. What do people do that on a gap year? Kibbutz. They, go, they w- what? It's a it's a unique settlement of Israel. You're gonna go there? <laughs> what? What do you want about? I asked you what job would you get if you got, if it all went to shit? What? And you're going on a fucking pilgrimage? What's kibbutz? I, th- I think I've misunderstood the word. What do you but think? I think I might go foreign, foreign beach cunt. I might be that guy. Why? What am I going to do over here? Garden. You could do that, that in England. What would you do? What would I do? Yeah. If it all, I couldn't work in the industry anymore. This industry. Yeah. Uh, fucking hell. Because you didn't know you were going to end up doing this two years ago. No. And my plan was to be a teacher, which now terrifies me. Um, yeah. Probably a college teacher. 
College that, that, was the, swear. that was the plan. To yeah, I have to college. say, if you were going to do teaching, that I've said it before, that's the one. So, uh, that was the happiest I've ever been in education. 16 to 18, or 16 to 19, because I had to restart the college year. But the, when I went to the college, that was so great. And, like, there were some kids that weren't that bothered, but mainly everyone was there. They got to specialise in the subjects. Just everyone was a bit happier. You got to call people by the first name. I know you probably didn't at Cardinal Heed in sixth form, did you? You had to say Mr. Did you? Yeah, yeah. But at, uh, Sir. at, at, at Newman in Mr. Pre Preston, <laughs> Mr. Mr. We could call everyone by the first name. It's just you just get treated like an adult. It's better. Well, when I started. Hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Park the boat. In your school, you were allowed to call the teachers by their first name. No, you're not listening to me. In when we went to college, I went to college. Right. So in our sixth form, so I did uh, five years at school, we had a sixth form. If you can get to the end of that five years, like Hutton is all boys until college. The sixth form has girls in it. Same as asking. So you yeah. literally spent five years masturbating about all of these sixth form girls going, one day I'll be a fucking sixth former and maybe I'll get to fucking touch one of these sixth formers. It was amazing. I got two months in, my mum died, my head went. And I was out. Of, I was out of sixth form. I just didn't last much longer. I applied to the college in town in Preston. I couldn't get in till the September because it was already November by then. So they had a place for me. I was going to start the year again. I got a few jobs. Lived with my dad. Lived with my auntie. It was all a fucking mess, basically. Um, when you got to college, it, that's it was so much better. It was so much better. Our theatre studies teacher was called Pete. Um, the, I had a politics uh, tutor called Brian and we did media stuff. It was just, you get treated, but you get to wear your own yeah. clothes. So much better. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Because in our school, there was nothing more joyous than the week where you found out the first name of any teacher. Yeah. And just waiting for the Paula! first... Paula! <laughs> ah, Paula! Paula! <laughs> On the playground. Oh, I was just saying that. Paula! I wasn't... Was that your name, miss? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just shouting it for no reason. Have you seen the TikTok <laughs> of the kid who just goes around his whole school and uses everyone's first name just to see that initial reaction? It's obviously a school where that doesn't happen as well. And some of the teachers are like, what the fuck did you see? You can see, you, <laughs> you can see they want to go, what the fuck? Did you just... And then others, are, yeah, you don't want to mess with them. There's some teachers, you could have known their first name the whole time. You weren't shouting it. Like Mr. McNeil... I don't even, I wouldn't have wanted to know what his first name was. I w just in case I accidentally said something like it, because he was the scariest cunt of a deputy head. It's like the Antichrist. F everyone's so scared I'd of him. I'd love to go back now and meet them and go, you're a fucking maggot. Because wow. <laughs> you were kids terrified of them, and now they're little fucking pussy holes. I go back and go, you're a proper ming. Stop talking to these kids like that. Because yeah. Yeah, you can't say nothing to me. And the kids can hear me say it. Yeah, he's a maggot. You know, if, they, if my school invited me back now, you know some of the teachers who spoke to me like shit, yeah. if they were still there, if they invited me into their classes, I'd, I'd honestly ruin their Was careers. Cardinal Heaton yeah. strict? Because Hutton was uh, strict. He was a couple yes of no. like. They were strict with our classes because we were clever. Our school was such a mixed bag of really intelligent lads and like us. Is. And then genuine, genuine idiots who just wanted to push people over, punch them in the head, maybe stab them with a chisel. And <laughs> if those kids went a week without stabbing someone, they got to go on quad bikes. They got to build <laughs> in the field in our school uh, a dirt bike like track and then got given dirt bikes to ride on them because they hadn't like started a fire that week. <laughs> like, right. I've never started a fire and I get fuck all. Right. So they were strict with us. Yeah, but you, 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 you know, what the you were in a bracket where you're like, of course you didn't start a fire. You know better. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you didn't kill someone oh, this week. Fucking a quad Jimmy matches over here. He's done really well. Right. Okay. Yeah. So they would incentivize the naughty kids not being naughty, but then us be it, like we we got no, like for behaving we got nothing. My school was even stricter than that. They just treated people with, I think, genuine learning difficulties like they were morons. <laughs> Again, I know I get called old, but I went to school in, like, my school years were 92 to 97. 18, 92 to 18, 92. I was in 92 to 97. So when was when was corporal punishment? Did you have the cane? What? The cane? Was that a thing? In when was, when the was cane, the wrestler, ever come in and choke <laughs> slam you? Yeah, cane came in. The Undertaker came in as well. 
Dumb. <laughs> 1960, 1970, got rid of. My school had a vibe of like, they were still a little bit pissed off that the cane wasn't allowed. Oh, I thought the cane was in. Oh, right. Um, just take, when was the cane taken out of British schools? Yeah. Mad the cane, innit? My dad got caned. Yeah, my dad got caned as well. Uh, and 1986. And, and his dad, my granddad, used the slipper. What? What 1986. year? 1986. You only Holy just missed out. Holy shit! Look. Holy shit, I missed it by six years. It must have been a, a gradual phase out. They weren't like smack, 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 smack for 86 gone. I bet it was phased out before that in a lot of schools. My granddad tells me all the times you got caned. It's mad, like across the hands and all that. Fucking rats. But if I went back now and I got like, you know, they, when we were in school, every now and then, someone who used to go to the school who's gone on to do quite well, would be brought back and they'd just be like taken round the school and you could, you'd could see them in the corridor being like, oh yeah, this is the new Peter Pan. They're like, fucking hell, oh, that's different than when it's I was the, here. The and then one. occasionally they'd just be Peter brought Pan. into like, what? into a class. PE department. Oh, okay. We were, I thought we were a sports school. Pedo department. <laughs> it's the same thing. Same. Hey, hello. Hey. Hey. Especially in our school. Hey. Was in our school. Hey. Mr. You Know What, beginning Mr. with beach. beach. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Beach got done for fucking uh, six, six former. former. Can we say ass. that? We can we say that? Yeah, face fucked her and then put in a bomb, um, allegedly. <laughs> great, great, fine though, allegedly. Great save at the end there. <laughs> Have I told you about the day we found that out? Was it the same day you found out his first name? No, I know. It was From the, it was the same day of my first ever gig. Was it? No, yep. we were in school still. Right, go on, hang on, hang on. We we'll get, oh, yeah, of course you were. We're blurring the lines. You found out that Mister so we, Mister we B, Mister Beach. Right. Um, oh, now Carl's nervy. So B E E C H as well. Do you know, remember his first name? Do you remember his first name? What? Do you remember his first name? Brendan. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan B. This is public information. It was in the echo. Got found guilty. To be fair. Um, oh, well, then we're fine. What are we on about? Yeah. All right. Um, we were in school. It was like. Oh, I hope this isn't foreshadowing. Have you heard the rumor about Beach? Because you called him by the second name, didn't you, Beach? Yeah, he's been he's been shagging one of the six formers. So we, uh, there was a shop by our school. In six, could you leave your sixth form or college? Yeah. You could just walk out. So we just walked to the shop. We walked in, he was on the front of the Echo, and the fellow in the Echo went, uh, in the shop went, you aren't buying the Echo. <laughs> well, I've been told we know why you're here. Because we wanted to just buy every <laughs> copy of it and just throw it around the school. A teacher had been and gone, don't sell the paper to any. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, sir. I won't sell newspapers. That news agent needs to grow a fucking pair. Yeah, we're allowed mm -hmm. to buy You're not buying the echo. I've been told by a teacher that has a zero authority <laughs> over this shop. Pussy up. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, 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 Mr. There, Beach was, was on the front of the echo. Beach is innocent. And you were at school. Yeah. We were at sixth form. Sixth form. <laughs> yeah. We were at sixth form. Did he turn up that day? Was he in? No, he'd been no! He his job. Oh, right. Are you having a laugh? Oh, my God. He would have right. got headed. Of course he is. He's gone. Yeah, he yeah. lost his job, of course. He oh, right. No longer oh, so he teacher. wasn't innocent, he was guilty. He got found guilty in, oh, in court. Right, of course. He face fucked a woman. <laughs> <laughs> allegedly. That, allegedly. <laughs> Tell you what, the uh, the Echo, the journalists, they really go into detail, don't they? Adam saw, was it you saw him in Potworld years later? They're fat. No. Someone I know saw him in Potworld years later, they're fat. <laughs> <laughs> Formerly a PE teacher. Life's gone to shit. Oh my god! Don't shag six four, but it's dead easy. But that, that so came you, out. You see, so just to go back, you want to go into teaching, yeah? Six yeah, six formers. <laughs> no. Courage. All right, cool, cool. All, right, that all <laughs> makes sense. Nice. Camera. But when we were in sixth form, it was like it's not that bad. She's a she's eighteen. She's a grown adult. Like what the fuck? And now you look back, you're like, oh, yeah, he's a dirty boy. Yeah. Oh no, she was seventeen. Sorry. And she was a PE student as well. Yeah. Don't name her. Don't I remember her name. I do. Don't name her. Do you? Yeah. Well, it's not statutory rape, is it? It's it's. Yeah. It's not. It is. It's in a position of power. I don't think that's statutory rape, though, is it? Right. You've well, you got lost. to be under 60. Oh, hang on. He lost his job. You're like, he, he got, you're found guilty. You can't just find it guilty. If it's just no, like, but it's not statutory. Yeah, so she's, he's got done for breach of power rather than whatever it is. Right. Oh, we don't know lad. what we're talking about. I do, <laughs> yeah. But, but, like, yeah. He's too powerful. He's like Thanos. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly what they said in the court as well. <laughs> Before Thanos was even like Thanos. Do you remember what the? Do you remember what the headline was? Uh, something like "City Teacher Shags Kids" or something, <laughs> something like that. Do you want me to find it? I won't put it in. But <laughs> what? What a day! Everyone was running around the yard, shaming Beach is innocent. 
just for the fuck of it. Yeah. They'll fuck them I on think the... They, I think the headline was something like... They'll fuck them on the beaches. Resigns, lol. Resigns. Wow. Uh, Your school... You had murderers, you had... <laughs> <laughs> he haunts the school now. <laughs> That was caught. That was caught by Barry Dodds <laughs> when he did a ghost hunt not, of Layfield House. We're not dropping that in, by the yes, way. Yes, no. we fucking. No, we're it's not. on the Liverpool Echo they website. Can Google it. We're they can not. Google we're it. not dropping in a picture. Of a fucking... <laughs> you got That is going in the episode. No, do not put. <laughs> Don't it's put your non-teacher in the fucking YouTube. Carl, I swear to God. Not me, I Carl. Don't Stay. That Stay. goes into the episode. Stay. We're having a director's vote. <laughs> <laughs> Holy um, shit! Yeah, it was, a, it was a not a boy. That's not so much boy. more exciting than the Mr. Kirk drowned his baby in a washing machine. That, did you see what the headline was? Our school. Beach bombs, bad bitch. <laughs> the elucidation he went for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mad. Liverpool <laughs> Echo was fucking rogue back then. <laughs> we just had one of our teachers uh, drowned his baby in a washing machine. Mr. Kirk. Was that true? And everyone was a bit... Well, I had, well, you never found it out. Also, we didn't have the Lancashire Evening Post doing f- <laughs> front page for us. There must be other stories about that. We had Newton. He was a fucking psychopath. Rest in yeah. peace. But, like, see teachers like him. I was going to say before, <laughs> if they brought me back to the school to do that little tour. So they toured him around the school. Occasionally, they bring him into a class. And you'd just be, like, be in the middle of doing fucking history or maths or whatever. And the door would just open. And it'd be, like, the deputy head with just some... Like boxer who's won his first three fights, and they go, "Oh, this is a uh, fucking Johnny Punches," and he used to go here, <laughs> and we'd all have to go, "Oh, job. cool, three, you know." He's, <laughs> he's a boxer, and we'd all have to go, "Oh, great!" And the teacher be like, "Oh, thanks, yeah." The teacher's clearly pissed off that the class has been interrupted just to let some <laughs> some like fucking boxer come yeah, in. But to be fair, if you're knocking out the murderers that you knocked out at Cardinal Heeman, like. Heyman, Heyman, Colonel, Heyman. Colonel Heyman, more like you know what I'm saying, hey. Mr. Beach, you dirty old bastard. Um, <laughs> anyone who's not killed someone gets a tour of your school. Yeah. Uh, so you're a full grown adult and you've not murdered anyone. Come round for a tour, guys. Class two B. Guess who's here today? Someone who's not killed three people. <laughs> If they brought me in to a class with a teacher who used to speak to me like shit, I'd be like, what's happening, kids? He's all right, yeah, just so you know, this cunt's a gobshite, and you can say whatever you want to him, and he's not allowed to it, yeah? So do whatever you want. He's got no power whatsoever. He can give you detention. Don't go. What's he going to do? Ming. In a bit, yeah. Next class. <laughs> Let's take you into the next... You haven't learned. Let's take you into the next class, right? Yeah, uh, Johnny <laughs> punches his ear. This shit bag. I'll fucking smash his head and then go for an old mate. Uh, didn't visit to school. Just starts pissing on it. Yeah, I'm not even a student here. Piss on the floor. Who's stabbing me? I'll fuck an 18-year-old girl right here. I'm not a teacher. It's not statue, right? Dan, is it? Is this going on Patreon? Fucking ridiculous. You massive man-child. I'm going to go back into that school say, hey, everyone, he's a gobshite. You don't need to do nothing. Spit in a teacher's mouth. What? Yeah? I, I fucking don't need this place. Do you, hey, guys, you know what patron is? Yeah, what? And the class will be like, Adam Rowe, Adam Rowe, Adam Rowe. And everyone's like, who is that guy? Who's that guy? And like, yeah, he's probably not killed someone. Probably not murdered anyone. But he's a badass. He's our hero. Fucking shout out, Mister Kelk. I told you when we shout found out, out that um, a, a, a man who thought he had power over us didn't even have a maths GCSE. <laughs> and, and, and how did that? How did that happen? How did you find out that he didn't have a GCSE? Because he like, had oh, to lad. sit in, we in were, the school. We were all PIs. In our school, you, if you there's something to know, we knew it. And as soon as we found that out, and he tried to say something, he'd be like, "You haven't even got a fucking match, you see, you fuck on." You do actually know that he had to sit it with the year 11s. Is that how we found out? <laughs> yeah. What, what years were you at school? What was your high school years? Uh, uh, we started in 03, and I know that because I remember me login was to a row 03. 03 to 08. Six, uh, high school. Yeah. Big school. And then we went to six form for three years, just for the sake of it. <laughs> yeah. Did you do three? You clocked the three. Oh, yeah, because the first... So, I've definitely mentioned this before. At GCSE, I didn't revise once. I just didn't. I didn't need to. It was very, very easy 
for me and for him and for it just I, and I got really good results. We got like fifteen A's. I got an A star, seven A's of being five C's. Yeah, um, you just let us in because we were great, and then we got there and went. <laughs> and then at six form, Finish. I was like, well, I don't have to do anything in the end either because that was easy. And at the end of AS level, first year of six form, it was like, oh, I should probably do those again. Yeah, you tried to kick me out. I did the same thing when I got to uni. I got to the end of the first year of uni and was like, I have not, I can't do this much work. I tried to kick Carl out, but out. then Johnny Punch just came in and was like, <laughs> don't leave, lad. No, fucking punch that head in. Oh my God, Johnny. Tried to kick me out as well. Johnny look punches at me now. his back. I'm he's, three, you know. He's now four and oh, because he's just sweated. Mr. B choose a pedo. <laughs> yeah, she took me into the office and she went like, you clearly don't want to be here. I was like, no, I do. And she was like, I got like four U's or something because I just sat there and closed the paper. I was like, no, I do, I really do. Basically, why did you do that though? What do you mean? Why did I mess I, around well, the sixth form? I know, but why did you get four U's? How? What? No, sorry. I, I, no, I did English in another school. I got right. an A there, but in my sixth form, I got like U's because I wasn't revising. I was messing around with them. <laughs> and then she tried to kick me out. And I was like, no, please, I promise I'll try. I basically just wanted to be with the boys, and not didn't learn anything. No. Doesn't matter. It was very easy to fuck around at sixth form because if you didn't go to a class, it wasn't like why weren't you there? It was just like. Oh, you missed a lot last lesson, so, you know, make sure you catch up. Yeah, well, that was the good bit about it, wasn't it? Yeah. We had a fucking when, 90, when you had to teach 90 yourself a size that footy match every day <laughs> <laughs> on a five a side. We went to six form to just throw pens out the window. And Hell in a cell <laughs> with a footy. She was playing. Wow. <sighs> a little bit of uh, fucking... Our school is endless stories, honestly. Then when someone, I won't say his name, rubbed poo on the Jedi picture. <laughs> Who's poo? His poo. He rubbed his own poo on a picture of Steven Gerrard. Yep. Shit into his pants. He was reached an, in. He was, an Everton, he was an Everton fan. I don't think he was a fan of anything. He was He was just mental. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I suppose if you're smearing shit on murals. <laughs> well, who did he support? I don't think that was the problem, Dan. <laughs> 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 well, fucking hell. He's a Tramir Rovers guy. <laughs> I remember that day. What a day. Uh, so you want to be a teacher. I'm going to go beach bum. Adam, what do you want to be? I think I'd just be like the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. <laughs> oh, good. Good answer. <laughs> so I should have thought of that. There's loads of money in that. <laughs> Shouldn't have spent so long on cars. <laughs> All right, lids, we've got a new Manscaped advert. Hey, you. Yeah, you. God, Bush. <laughs> you definitely do. If you haven't tried the best products from our sponsor today... Manscaped. Taking control of your bush is important. Isn't it, Carl? These products are so good, you're going to be showing pride in your new bush-free yard. It's a fact that you will have the best-kept nutsack on the cul-de-sac. Save big and be the most hygienic version of yourself by using our discount code WORD20 for 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. That's the blurb. In all truth, of all the sponsors we've been uh, attached to since we started the podcast, Manscaped is one of my absolute favourites. They've sent us all of their stuff. The Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0 is an amazing bit of kit. It's got a light on it. It's really well done. It reduces nicks and everything. I've used it since we got it free for like a year and a half. Laura's been using it. Clean up your pub area. They're talking about bush here. No one needs a big old hairy nutsack. You need to think about it. If you want someone touching it, kissing it, give it a trim. Use the Lawnmower 4.0. Get on Manscaped. Have a look at all their products. Manscaped.com. The promo code is WORD20 for 20% off and free shipping at Manscaped.com. Get on me. Love part two. It's my favourite part, you know. Is it? Yeah. Uh, Dan Johnson says... <laughs> Hi, Lids. Very happy to see Schultz. Andrew Schultz has a new special coming out, and I'm interested to see that he's done so, having to had, having to had it, having had to buy it back from a streaming platform. I assume is Netflix. He's now selling it via his website as he needs to recoup costs, and I find it interesting that he had to do so because they tried to cut some of his jokes. I think both of you would have done the same thing, and I'm interested to hear about your opinions on the whole lot. More than that, I would like to know how logistically you think it was able to happen. Surely he wouldn't have sold his special to Netflix if they had the right to cut it up. Also, I'm assuming Netflix have sold it back for more than they bought it for, which seems a bit shitty. I mean, uh, you're getting annoyed about assumptions, but you're probably right. That's from Dan Johnson. Old school. One of the very first 
Oh, Jizzles. P- oh, Jizzles, who's been sending in good questions since January 2020. Uh, Dan J. So we talked about it a little bit off pod uh, last week. Schultz has bought a special back. Do you know much about it? Um, I know he has sort of refused to name the streaming platform, which would suggest that, that there's a reason for that. So I don't know whether it is Netflix or someone else. Um, it's it's very on brand for him, isn't it? And it's exactly what he'll do. He has built a, his entire career and his reputation, certainly in recent years, on I do what I want, I'm independent, I make these jokes, it is jokes, It I make jokes about everyone at everyone's expense, everyone, race, creed, religion, everyone in the crowd gets stuff leveled their way and is is crowd to the most eclectic group of people you'll ever see and then a streaming platform has gone right not that one that one and that one and that one needs to be changed and let's just cut a bit of context out of that because that and he's gone no i've done this show for hundreds of thousands of people on tour and had no problems so it's going out is this infamous that's just been yeah. toured yeah it's going out exactly as i wanted to go out uh, and they've gone, well, we, we won't put it out on the platform because we think it's going to get a lot of shit on Twitter and stuff. Um, I think, I don't, I, look, I'm sp- wildly speculating. I, I don't know whether that would be Netflix because Netflix have quite staunchly stood by some of their bigger comics when I mean, they've. Chappelle is really. Chappelle, Jimmy Carr, G- Gervais. Gervais. Gone in the paint. Like, regardless of what you think of what they said and the jokes they made, the specials are still up on Netflix and they've done largely fuck all and gone, look. Don't watch it. So I don't. I don't they know. Had staff walkouts in for Chappelle, yeah, yeah, in California, didn't they? So I, I, I think it's incredible. I think he'll pro- like. God knows what it cost him to get it back from whoever it was. Uh, I know it, it. It was definitely more than a million dollars that he's had to pay to get it back. Um, he said his life savings, didn't he? Yeah, but he also said he spent his life savings making the studio the month before his new upgraded studio. He's so got all them life savings going out. Yeah, I don't know what it's cost him. Um, I think Schultz <clears throat> and the way he markets himself and everything he does and his stand-up, I think it's fucking brilliant. And if he's done this, there's a reason for it. And he'll probably end up making more money selling it himself. He's got a literal army of fans. Like, we've got our army of fans who have a word. You know, Flagrant and the, the Schultz following is much bigger than what we've got. And we're doing all right. I reckon he'll sell an awful lot of copies of this special. I wonder why not YouTube. I wonder why not just for views. Is, I think do you Je- feel like he's got the army now already? Now he needs to actually pay back some of this, recoup some of this money. I think it's a bit of both. I also think like he's got to a point in his career where you know these streaming platforms are offering him more than a million dollars, whatever it is, and he's gone. If I put it out on YouTube, like there's hours of shots on YouTube already. He's got enough there for fans to go and find. Yeah. So this latest one, put it on behind a paywall. If there's anyone on the planet at the minute who can put a special up for $15 behind a paywall and have it get bought, it's probably Andrew. And, you know, if he's had to pay $2 million or three or, what, or whatever it is yeah. to get this back, then let him go and try and Louis CK has been selling those his specials for a long time off his mailing list. The, the exceptional comics can go beyond the just getting eyes on it. They're not just about building a like they're about paying for art, and I appreciate everyone that pays for our Patreon because they're going. Yeah, these guys work really hard. There's loads of stuff out there for free, and I don't mind paying for a little bit of content. And Schultz is so good that I think his fans will want to pay for a spe- they They're never when you do it this way. They're never a rip off. You because you're cutting out so many middlemen. Yeah, like Louis C.K. has been selling. Selling his specials for sometimes five dollars, ten dollars, it's just really good value. You're cutting out all the distribution, usually cutting out massive agencies as well, and all of a sudden it becomes really affordable. And you're paying the person that you like directly, basically. Also, it's such a shame, and I I hope this isn't, you know, it's probably not where we're going because, like you say, with Chappelle and Gervais and all the trans stuff, that's not what Schultz was doing. Schultz Schultz fucks around with. Cultural stuff, race, jokes, talks to the crap. His um, social media, Andrew Schultz's social media, where it's just like, obviously he's got his tour show, but he fucks around with the crowd and he can clip that out. It's been really helpful for me because like my tour show is my tour show. Like we're on preview nine now. 
it's not far off what it'll be. I can't clip it out and show people. But if something happens in the crowd and you have a bit of interaction, you can clip that out. His audience interaction clips are as good as anyone on yeah. the internet. And if that's what uh, they're trying to edit out, uh, it's so grim because I'm starting to find no, the whole like trans, what, what, trans stuff a bit dull now. Like, yeah. I really feel like this has been discussed ad nauseum now. Like, all right, we get it. Um, they tried to make him cut his abortion joke. Have you seen it? No. So you can go and watch it. Um, it's essentially, it's just a really funny way of looking at the Roe v. Wade abortion argument, which he goes, he, he, he does the classic thing of letting, you know, he's setting a trap for people to fall into. He's like, women, yeah. it's your body, it's your choice. And, you know, I'm just quite comfortable knowing when we get up to heaven and God's like, oh, <laughs> were you all killing babies? And we're like, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> they made it very clear that that was their decision. It's jokes. Like, and... That it's not even that much of a like it's obviously a subject that affects people, but he's not really offending anyone. It's an impossible hypothetical. I I, I don't know why that would ever need to come out. So if they're the same in thing, heaven, yeah, it's yeah. impossible <laughs> hypothetical. I don't know if they're the type of things they're trying to make them cut out. Then yeah, yeah for... it's better doing it. I wonder if they're gonna start being more stringent on him. Um... Specials then. I wonder if it was Netflix and they're like, do you know what? We're sick of this shit. No, I'm hot. I pray like that. That's no, but not I'm the saying. Case. I want. You never know, do you? With the way the world's going with the internet laws now, what's going to change? Possibly. We Fuck we that. will see. But if if that happens, if this um, media bill gets passed, if the Tories manage to stay in power and Nadine Dorries <laughs> manages to stay in charge of digital and culture and whatever else she's fucking in charge of, and she passes through this media bill, which essentially gives the government the right to say. Oh, that Jimmy Carr special had an offensive joke in it. Take it down now. Um, what will happen is pr comedy, like what Schultz does, and the sort of stuff I like to do in Chappelle and uh, Bill Bear, uh, whose new special at Red Rocks is fucking hilarious. It'll go underground, and it'll it might benefit from it. To be honest with you, in the long term, and it'll be an era of uh, an era of prohibition. Um, I, I just, yeah, I think it'd be... I can't a, see it. I just can't. I think they're always going to be chasing their tails with the internet. I think they... Yeah, that's what he means, though. They could, they could ban it on the big ones and it goes underground. Yeah. Yeah. They're never going to get rid of it, but well, they're going to push it. Into they've anything. already banned it off network television and now network television is dying. I mean, it's not just that, is it? But The argument with network television, though, is that, like, if you're flicking through the channels and you flick onto Channel 4, and Andrew Schultz's special is on, and then that joke comes up, and it's an abortion joke. You haven't really chosen to watch that. Oh, oh, oh mate, I'm 100%. That's But clicking on his face on, an, on a streaming network and going, I want to watch this special is, is... If you go down the rabbit hole, then you're like, oh, this rabbit hole's awful. Like That is the whole internet. Yeah. Whether you're on a streaming service called Netflix or fucking Amazon Prime, or they're just different rabbit holes on the internet. It's like being on Pornhub and going, that porn was horrible. <laughs> well, yeah, you watched it. <laughs> yeah. But then there is, you know. I do do that sometimes. Yeah, but you wouldn't after complain I've to Pornhub. Really bad about myself. Yeah. You know you've had a weird wank if you email Nadine Dorries afterwards. <laughs> like, oh, Nadine, it's gone weird, that. Everyone's got the Take girls. her down. I don't even, what is a midget fucking koala bear? They're already small. <laughs> that would be post years clarity. Yeah, if you've just yeah, jizzed yeah, over yeah. A, a dwarf koala bear, whatever they're called these days. <laughs> did you try and... Did Make you, that politically did you correct? really politically correct dwarf koala... Uh, sorry, little person koala bear? <laughs> well saved there, Carl. We all get post jizz clarity, though. The guilt. Yeah. I, I genuinely don't. You don't? Nah. You've never had post jizz clarity after a one-night stand? I'm not no, 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 I mean, no, 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 no. I mean, when you're having a, a masturbation session. Yeah, because you've never had a one night stand. No, no, but I'm, yeah, but I'm, I'm talking. Right. No, 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 no. Let me just put this in your brain for a second. Okay. Is it worse? Young Ca Carl. Right. <laughs> right. Wait, because I, he will definitely relate to this. Okay. Sometimes you've watched a bit of porn, right? Yeah. A porno, a pornograph. Yeah. Right. And you've come. A pornograph. <laughs> right. Turn all the old porn. And you've come. Yep. Cheers. Blah, everywhere. Yeah. That's how, and that's how he comes. That's his cum noise. <laughs> blah, blah. Right? And the second that that's how's yeah. The second yeah. 
you you want to put your phone in a different room, don't you? Yeah, you want to burn your phone. Yeah, you're like, oh, what what have I just been watching? That is insane. And you like sometimes I I've got I've gone for a walk and left my phone in the house, and you know how much of a big deal that is for me to go for a walk without my phone. But you've washed first. Why? You've washed. No, just walk no. out naked. Come on, my belly. <laughs> come on, his belly. You all know what I've done. That's real wank regret, isn't it? <laughs> Is that Adam Rowe with a hard on and jizz on his tummy? Oh, you know, he must have, that must have been a really small koala bear. <laughs> Fucking hell, mate. A fugue state. What am I? Right. Even, what am I? Now imagine that, but it's not your phone. It's a woman in your bed. Yeah, I don't want a bear, now. Right? No, but you do. You just can't. You can leave it in the house and walk out. <laughs> you try and fold her down like a laptop. <laughs> Sorry, Jill. Jill? Is that because you don't like the person? Just because you just, like, you, you realise you were just horny and you... <laughs> Funnily enough, Schultz spoke about this on Rogan once. Until a man jizzes, he doesn't actually know if he likes you. That's a good lie. It's true. Like... Sometimes you are like, oh, this person's really interesting and funny. We're having a great time. We're having sex. Oh, this is great. And, oh, my God. You are the dullest, most ugly, boring thing I've ever come across in my life. Come across no pun intended. <laughs> I feel like Dan doesn't get any guilt. Uh, yeah, I've had some one night stands where you're like, well, but I mean, they probably like I, I can empathize enough that they might be like, oh, Jesus, all of that forehead, you know, like. What about post one? If usually the thing is with one night stands, it's the morning in it. So I get I get the premise, but very rarely have I gone. Oh yeah, this is great. Oh, and then gone. Oh, like it's not. I'm not a fucking psycho. Like you don't jizz and then all of a sudden <laughs> the is. cloud, the jizz cloud clears and you're like, oh my god, she's a monster. Like I'm no, not, it's not that they're a monster. It's just regret. It's instant regret <clears throat> having done what you've done. I've woken up in the morning next to some ladies and as I've gone, ooh, I've seen it in her eyes as well. Like we've had mirroring like, uh, ooh, ooh, well, I'm not inviting you for breakfast and I don't think you want to stay anyway. So like, it's, yeah. The amount of meetings I've what? had in different cities at 9am that I've had to leave Oh for. shit, I have a meeting. <laughs> Adam, you you're in your flat in Dovecot. Never mind that. But you don't get post self the wanking thing you don't get anything after that you don't feel i think it's all about reps boys it's all about reps you're telling me you've never watched a pornograph and then being like oh my god a porno i need a new laptop irish porn <laughs> a pornograph a pornograph um what happens if you've accidentally I've what happens if you've not closed it and you've opened your browser again and it's still there an hour later you don't feel like oh well that, okay, that happens with twitter sometimes and she's just like that happens with Twitter. I've opened like Twitter in a shop and someone's like, blah, 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 and I'm like, ooh, good jab the sound was down on that one. No, but I mean, because I got my dirty Twitter. But you don't feel like, oh, I'm bad. Nah, mate. Mad. Je nah, nah, there's nah. nothing worse than being in the bread aisle of Sainsbury's, opening your phones, check your shopping list. And you're like... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is. It's when you're going to show someone something. Like, obviously, and then. Your phone's just someone getting bombed on it. Yeah. A bit. <laughs> just freeze frame. It's my professional life around right that. Screenshot that bad boy. <laughs> Katie Knowles. Retweet. Um I uh yeah, I don't I watch some fucking weird porn, but I'm like, yeah, that's cool. That's the, the, the Even job. afterwards you're like, that was good. You're not like, oh. You're telling me you can I'm not surprised by it. Like I, I love I the, am the change in state. Like I I obviously can never see it. Like I, we're in the science center. We can never do studies of this because I don't want to get too close to the pre and post jizz Adam Rowe. Like I like the comedy Adam Rowe. <laughs> I like the podcasting Adam Rowe. This works great. I don't need to see rock hard and then covered in his jizz and going rah. But I don't get the instant like, oh yeah, <laughs> trans koala bear. <laughs> and then, and then, oh, what is this? I don't do you get carry that. on watching? I feel oh. like you get to the end of the video, even if you finish. Oh, no, that, I mean, that would make you an absolute murderer. Once you jizz, <laughs> that's the end. There you go. That's that feeling. Isn't no, it? you don't want to listen that to that anymore. That is a different thing. I don't. It then, is a different thing. I'm not then appalled by it. <laughs> and I watch some pretty freaky fucking stuff. My pegging stuff I've been watching recently. Shout out public episode. Yeah. Okay. 
public but it's staying in as well. Oh, the old pegs. Oh. You're telling me you can come and look at your phone slash laptop and see a woman pegging a man. They're both covered in cum and piss. And, poo. and they're surrounded by several Native Americans doing chants and not feel bad about yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah, You're yeah. You're telling yeah. us that? The piss peg Native American <laughs> chanting porn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dan, it happened. Uh, I literally had to turn the volume down. Hey, yeah, yeah, hey, 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 Laura's like, what are you watching in there? Um, Pogantis. Pogantis. <laughs> <laughs> this death of poker hunters porn. Yeah. Can I see it? No. Oh. No. I don't, I'm not a big uh, instant regret guy. I think it's a funny conceit. I'll give you that. But I, I don't. Ah, like, it's, you know. I don't make the noise. There has like, been oh. some mornings when, <laughs> you know, because you're so dehydrated. Life's offensive anyway, isn't it? But. Oh yeah, I thought I do not miss that about being single. Where you wake up like <laughs> so, my mat, oh God. so dehydrated, your eyes are sore, and then you look and she's like some big headed lady. Like, Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> some fucking like Alec Baldwin she's in a wig. Oh, I'm watching you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Last night was wonderful. So I've never had a one night stand. I've got questions. It's okay. like a child. I'm like a five-year-old, I'm not a five-year-old, like a ten-year-old. Yeah, the amount of five-year-olds. <laughs> sometimes that's that's the difficult thing about drop-off with Etta in the morning. All of her schoolmates coming up going, uh, Dan, can I ask you about one night's time? Dan? <laughs> Dan? Um, five-year-olds? Do you cuddle? Uh, it depends. It depends what the girl wants. Do you want to cuddle? Uh, oof. <laughs> yeah, I, so like I, so I, I, I suppose if you really ha are getting on... There could be a bit of cuddling, but I don't think I don't remember loads. What of kind cuddling. of cuddling are we talking? Big spoon, little spoon, or are we talking like Nestle box? <laughs> oh, God, box. Do you know, like it's <laughs> very much like just afterwards when you're doing the, you know. No, but what are you doing? Are you? Are you... <laughs> That'll do, pig. <laughs> well done. Shh. When you're doing the goodwill hunting, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. I don't know why your head's big. It's not your fault. Yeah, maybe try. And, Hello. Maybe not try. And, I don't know. I don't know if a perm suits your head. Yeah. Well, I know I've got a big forehead, but you've got a big forehead as well, Jill. Good morning. No, Shall we spoon? Are you are you spooning or are you embracing? Yeah. What are you doing? I, I've, I've always thought that. Well, listen. If you have a one night stand, bonk, cheers. Go, oh, hey, babe. That was great. Just kiss her on a big fucking forehead. <laughs> it's large, isn't it? <laughs> and then you go for a shower, and then she like showers for you. Do you want to go for a shower? You just oh, a spare towel there if you want to use that one. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she comes out, and then you get dressed, and then you go. Shall we have a cuddle? You're a murderer. <laughs> no, no. So what? That's, 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 that's not what he was asking. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Well, that's not uh, what he meant. Oh, was it not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thanks for clearing that up. Cuddle time. Uh, but, hey, before oh. I get you an Uber, shall we have a big go cuddle? What you mean is, post-coital... And she's staying in the night. And she's staying the night. Do you have a little... Yeah. Or yeah. A, it mean, depends. Yeah, it, maybe. It, it depends for me. Okay? So, are you talking strictly one night stands? You've just found this girl in town. You've found her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lost. She was, she's wandered off. Come on. <laughs> yeah. right. I don't know, her head's so big it's attracting the moon. <laughs> yeah. She was, <laughs> it's got right. fucking grand. So this isn't moment. someone you're seeing. No, this is just a And the first time you've slept with a them. lady you've a lady you've uh, you've had fun with in the club and you want to go out back and have the bang bang. Right, Carl, I know you've never had a one night stand, but have you ever been out in normal human society? <laughs> this is a lady you found in the club. <laughs> like it's like you're an AI trying to talk about fucking <laughs> hip hop culture. This you are out in the club, you found a lady and take her back for some human kiss time mwah, mwah, <laughs> with the face and the reproductive organs. It's a girl you don't know and you're not going to know afterwards. Okay. Ah, uh, no, but that's, you know, you don't usually explicitly say that. No, you both loud. know. Yeah, it's just you a, know what's up. A jizz sesh. Yeah, right. So yeah, that's yeah. different for me then. So, yeah, a, a post sex cuddle or a spoon, I think, is more intimate than sex itself. You're both, you're both very vulnerable, aren't you? Yeah. So, if it's a one night stand, 
I, I think that's a bit sort of too much. It's got to happen very naturally. Because if you bonk and then go, God, I don't know. Like, yeah. So what you do then? You just roll over and go, okay. I, I have done that before. If I if I know that we're both on the same page, and they do it as well. Like they will literally just face the other way, and I'll be like, sounds. I'll face the other way. But if if I've been dating someone and you sleep with them for the first time, but I've done that. And yeah, but I'm just trying to show the explicit differences. Yeah, the first time you have sex with someone, if it's a one night stand. And by the way, if you're watching this for the first time and you think I'm some forty year old virgin, <laughs> no, I'm just a, a, a girlfriend. But he's got no fuzzy, just one. Yeah, I've just had a girlfriend for a long time. Yeah, I enjoy a cuddle with someone I'm into. Yeah, he's a, a, a very one night stand. Now, what? Uh, where? Where do we stand on uh, washing the entrance before the big race? <laughs> Whose entrance? <laughs> you want that all there, possibly? You know what? You, you get in the door. New game show. <laughs> you've, been, you've been dancing. You've been dancing in the club. You've been enjoying human music in the club. <laughs> rhythmical, with rhythmical beats in the club. And you've said, you, I imagine that as a human, <laughs> an AI pretending to be a human, you're in the club and you're moving your body you are in to the, the club. rhythm. And you, you dance. Say, hey, you, lady female, <laughs> you seem to enjoy the rhythm of this human music. Would you like to join me in my habitat and make sex? <laughs> um, I am a big fan of getting him in the wash. What? <laughs> Get in the wash? Like the, the laundry machine. <laughs> You've been clubbing. I just need to go to the laundry. Do you feel a bit hot? Do you feel a bit hot? Does that not ruin the moment? No. So you would get a woman back to your flat. Or, or a man. Yeah. <laughs> or an uncle. Or a koala bear. <laughs> a little person koala bear. So, Dan, no, 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 no. Right, listen. So I'd ask for a biff check. Laura's gone. Right? She's gone. No, this is before Laura. No, no, for future reference. Right. Because right, you still you still go into disco text and stuff, right? Laura's gone. She has married Watch this episode. What? She's watched this episode. <laughs> cool. I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> so you and her have um You've had a big argument, and she's gone, oh, I'm going out and getting drunk. And on the night out, she's met the true love of her life. Turns out it was never you. Right? Oh, yeah. So it's a fella called George Brian. Ellic it was George Ellicobi. George Ellicobi. No, yeah. it's a fella called Brian who works in HR for Barclays. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But, like, he's, he's real up-and-comer in the HR world. Yeah, yeah. And also, he won the Euro Millions, but he hasn't told anyone about it. But then he just, he, like, he... He just unloads on someone. She's like, oh my God, it's one of the order millions. He's a real up and coming in HR. This is the guy for me. She's gone, moved in with him. They live in Worthing. One right? of the order millions, but right. still works in HR. Because he's trying to keep her undercover. Because he's want people asking him for money. He just loves Barclays. 190 million in the bank, but he loves HR. Drives to work in his car. Tell you the thing is about Ryan, it's not about the money, it's about human resources. <laughs> well, he's a fucking paedophile. So she's found a rich paedophile. Nice yeah. one. So she's moved to Worthing. Great. That's, you pulled that out. Let's. <laughs> Worthing. Where's Worthing? You don't know. Yeah, it's in the UK. It's in the UK. She's moved somewhere else. She's moved far enough away that you can have some distance between each other, but that you can both still share custody of the children. Oh, brilliant. Oh, just right. do half a drive to Worthing. <laughs> AIDS. Blackburn. I suppose, I suppose Ryan could always use his helicopter to Brian. drop the kids off. Brian. Oh, sorry. Silly. <laughs> right, and I'm dating. So you're back on the scene. Oh, wicked. You're back in the club. In Sorgal? Yeah. No, you've moved to Liverpool because it makes sense. You're dying for me to, lose, to move to Liverpool. Like. It felt so much better though for everyone. Yeah, it? it would be better. Um, so you've moved to Liverpool. You've got a bachelor pad, right? Oh, yeah. Got Bitch a seven-bedroom flat. But you call I, it a bachelor pad. Why don't I get like a retirement village? You know, two birds, one stone, isn't it? That old, mate. Oh. Yeah. Oh. This is coming in the next few weeks. You've still got plenty of time ahead. You're in the bachelor pad, as you call it. Right? So you, you're living the life. Oh, and you're yeah, in the club, yeah, yeah. I'm in right? Yeah. The, loving some human music. And a lady human comes Hello. over to you. And she's like, look at this and that. You're telling me your first response would be, I'll have a look at that once you've cleaned it. Oh, no, no. My first re response would be, mm, I love the rhythmical tunes. <laughs> and I love the way you move your human body to these rhythmical tunes. Yes, our connection is palpable. Would you like to have a beverage? A couple of beverages in. Nothing sinister. A couple of beverages. Would you like to accompany me to my retirement village stroke bachelor pad? And she'd be like, yes, I like a handlebar when I use the toilet. <laughs> and when we got back, 
I would suggest. Suggest? I would suggest. I would just lightly suggest. I'd be like, hey, what do you want? Cheese board? A shower? Small dick? A wash? I'd be like, do you know what? I might get a, a shower. Are you being serious? I am a big fan of getting back after a night out and having a shower. I'm a bit of a piss showerer. Right. That's I, I totally understand that. I've done that before. Oh, but if I'm showered... No. She no. Has, oh, no, no, no. You Wait. can't get in the shower while she's in the bed with the pussy. <laughs> Is that what they do? Is that what ladies do? Well, I'm home now. I'll get in bed with the pussy. Yeah, you can't... Oh, I'm trying Just. to get in the shower. You're in the shower singing a fucking, like, A-team a theme tune, brushing your teeth or something, and she's waiting. <laughs> the A-team... da 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh my like god! Oh, oh, I'm so <laughs> like cleaning your body, and then she's in bed, like. Oh yeah. And you're like, your turn. One song shower, please. No. Can I just say, if you've <laughs> had a shower after a night out, and there is a lady with an unwashed pum pum in the bed, uh, 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 there's an imbalance. But why are you getting the shower? Listen, because it feels nice. No, Dan. And then I'm clean. You can get home after a night out when you haven't brought. A lady human back for the fucking times, right? You can do, you can get a shower then. Yeah. If you've got a girl with you, you can't be like, hang on, love. I've got a bit of a smelly cock. I'll be back in a minute. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I forgot your, you lot are so passionate. You just get back and just fucking push her up against the smeg. And, and then cock. just pound her. That's what in. should happen, yeah. It, that's, that is literally what you do, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm you get back, you get in bed. Uh, Laura's gone. Are we doing yeah. this for now? Yeah. I'm in my 40s. Yeah. Nah. You get it on the I'll bed. Like, you have eight. Minutes of fire, and then you get a shower, and then you go again. What on a warm night? Yeah. Oh, I'd be like, listen, love, we need to leave a window open, but I'm gonna have to have an antihistamine. I'm not gonna like it as well. I don't mind a smelly biff. <laughs> <laughs> I need that antihistamine. <laughs> so, I saw something brilliant on on Instagram Reels. <laughs> it's like someone was doing some baking, and it was like they took um. They took like a a tablecloth off like a pile or something. There was a bit of steam, and it was like when you take your girl's gym gym shorts off after she's been for a workout, and they just went. That, that like oh. you like, he likes that. Oh, that little. You like a smell. Oh, that's a, No, I said I don't mind one. Oh, like, there's, if, if there's the, a little bit of condensation coming off the lady. If she's got a little bit of the cha cha slide left down there, oh. I don't mind that. Slide to the lip. <laughs> oh. Take it back now, y'all. <laughs> My cock this time. Shh. My One shower this time. time. Oh, Reverse. Well, that's anus. Anal. Anus, anal. Everybody I mean, suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> He's doing the cha cha. Puss is that. How low can you go? Oh, can not you go that low? low. Not, you know. What about a wet wipe? What about a friendly wet wipe? No? If, if she is self conscious. Bit of Dettol. If she is self conscious. Are you and giving she, it? Yeah. Well, like foreplay, innit? Like, oh, I'm going to do so many things to you. Have a wipe. <laughs> if no, she doesn't not, then, not for the kitchen. you're a dirty girl and I don't like it so get a wash yeah if she you're doesn't then call so the police dirty literally if the girl is self conscious and she's like oh my god I've been dancing all night I've got a sweaty fanny I'd be like no have you seen Shaw there? have you seen Shawshank yeah Bugs. yeah when they get there just line her up oh, with the hose yeah yeah with the hose <laughs> I'd take her in the garden fresh fish fresh fish <laughs> You'd actually make a girl get a shower, wouldn't you? <laughs> Would you get in the shower with her? Sexy. It's not sexy. Get in the shower's not sexy. It fucking is. I've never had a rich person shower. What kind of shower do you have? Small, normal people showers are not sexy. They're just elbows and fucking someone not in the water, are they? Like, I'm not a big... You know, last week I saw Jerry fucked again and she shit the bed. She asked me to get in the shower with her after that. Yeah. She was an animal. Did you wipe she her was ass? a koala bear. <laughs> what, who, the, who was this that you fucked? It was just a girl. You know who she is. No, he doesn't. Doesn't he? No. Big Kim. Yeah. No, no. it was Lil Kim. Jill. <laughs> Lil Kim. Big face Jill. <laughs> Hello, Adam. Lil Kim. <laughs> oh, God. you imagine if Lil Bang Lil Kim? She was my lady marmalade. <laughs> was that Lil Kim? Yeah. Was that Christina Aguilera? Christina Aguilera pinked Lil Kim and Miss Elliot. Oh, right. And someone else. And sister, so sister. George Alicobi. And George Alicobi. Bed sister. Did you yeah, get in the I shower? I think then they need a wash, yeah. Yeah. If they've shit she the was bed. Like, oh, I need to get, I need to get in the shower. I was like, yeah, you do, yeah. I'll, I'll sweat the bed. She was like, aren't you in the shower with me? I was yeah. like, you've just pooed the bed. Yeah. 
So Andrew Schultz has bought his special <laughs> back. And that's what we were trying to say. You know? <laughs> and I, I think Dan Johnson, I think we've pretty fundamentally answered your question. Haven't we? What do you think? Dan, do you think you we've got everything? I think we covered everything there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Schultz is going to enjoy watching this back himself, being like, damn, guys, you really nailed it. <laughs> I'm going for a shower. All right, guys, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an online way of getting therapy. You go on to betterhelp.com, you sign up, it asks you a load of questions, and usually within 48 hours, they have you matched up to a specialist therapist who matches your needs, your trauma, the things you want to talk about. You'll get an email going, you've been matched to this guy. This is John, the therapist, and he's going to talk you through your problems. There's no stigma with counselling and therapy. If you've got shit you need to work through, this is a great option. One of my negatives, I love counselling. I'm a massive convert to it. One of the negatives is actually having to meet a counsellor in person. This is all online. It's over Zoom. This is a way to go. I think you should really try it. If this is something you've been thinking about, try BetterHelp. I've been thinking about going to therapy for a while now, and I think I'm going to start with BetterHelp first. I think the online thing might be much more suitable to my lifestyle to be honest with you if you go to betterhelp.com slash word 10 that's betterhelp.com slash word 10 you get 10% off your first month of online therapy and it also lets them know that we sent you which is good for us it keeps the podcast going and keeps these episodes free so do it now go and get yourself some help we know you need it actually <laughs> <laughs> part three of four. Uh, this week's episode is sponsored by Haritos, or it will be if they ever give us any money. It's really good stuff, this. Um, Use code word diabetes10. <laughs> Hashtag not ad. Hashtag not ad. They have not sponsored us. Look at Stay there. Fialman. Business manager, Stay. I, I, I pressed applause because I thought we were all going to say JJ's name and that's it for randomly. JJ White is here! Jason John Wyatt, ladies and gents. How are you? What's going on, guys? Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks for bringing me out to your insane asylum or whatever the hell that is. <laughs> this looks like the place where they torture children on Stranger Things. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. What's next to you? People uh, doing science? Like, yeah, yep. there's labs and they're trying to cure AIDS. So they actually took some biopsies of Dan for that as well. Right. So everybody yeah. in this building is serious as fuck. And yeah. then there's laughter coming out of this office. You're Honestly, like, yeah. every now and then, because once we're <laughs> in here, we forget how loud we are right. and how thin these walls are. So you forget that other people can hear what's going on. Right. You, yeah. I often forget that there's anyone even fucking listening to the episodes. <laughs> and I feel like I'm just trying to make him laugh. But then sometimes I'll go to the toilet and on the way back, I hear these say something and they're just talking at like standard and conversational you know volume. How thin the and walls sometimes are. Sometimes when we're in here, we're talking like that. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> and there's definitely scientists. We've definitely like botched several experiments we could have cured cancer by now <laughs> if we hadn't been shouting nonce dead loudly oh uh, good you're, you're holding everything back we've progressed podcasting in the uk Comedy's really well important, yeah, yeah yeah totally um yeah well i love it we've brought someone from california like C canada via california to yeah. the science center in Runcorn. And you've quite, quite rightly gone, what the fuck is this yeah, place? I used to live here. I lived here for 15 years, as you know, and I never- The UK, I not know, Runcorn. In the UK. That's <laughs> it, just it. That's what I was going to say. I've never been to Runcorn. Like, you never? Just pop into Run Why would you come to Runcorn? Unless to get tortured. There wasn't gigs. Place. When he lived in Manchester, there wasn't really gigs in Runcorn, I don't think. Is Can't there a, think of what? There's a Runcorn gig now? Yeah. Yeah, really I, used good one. I used to book it and then I got- That's how we knew this and place. Book. Cause oh, really? yeah, that's how we got in because we'd gigged, we'd done a gig here and there was an inn. Did you? Right, you're just driving through, you thought this place looks cheap. <laughs> did yeah. Stephen, we can, we can afford to do something there. When Stephen picked you up, did he take you to the cafe? Across the way yeah. there? Yeah, oh yeah. So th there's a function room there and they have a comedy club every two months. Which is excellent. <laughs> We're yeah. in a building in a... <laughs> Yeah. We're in like a fucking <laughs> 80s nightmare laboratory. Yeah, yeah. Stephen King looks like this. Like, this is like, like, Some big looks names. like one of his fever dreams. Yeah. Some big names. You know, this. The, the, if you want to need a visual of where we are, because we've talked about this place loads, but I've said it, but the Heath Ledger, the hospital that he blows up in yeah. The Dark Knight Rises, right. when the, when the, you know when he taps the thing? <laughs> yeah. It's eerily That's similar to this yeah. gaff. Yeah, yeah. and Heath. the only difference is it's not in a city. <laughs> it's in the it's, middle of nowhere. It's why we call it the Heath Fair, God. Um, yeah, so that comedy club over there, the guy who runs it, he's from Runcorn. 
And I met him years ago. We used to run a, a smaller gig elsewhere. And then he was like, oh, I'm going to call it the comedy office and put it in this office block. And we're going to put it there and right. we're going to see how it goes. He sells 300, 400 tickets for it's every show. Gig. Russell Kane's headlined it. Daniel Sloss has headlined it. And all of them turn up and go, what the fuck am I doing here? Yeah. But like selling 400 tickets to a place that doesn't charge you room rental gives you the budget to get Daniel Sloss to come and do 20 minutes. All right, Runcorn. <laughs> I'm in it. I'm, I'm, I'm into doing. it. Just, all right, I'm down with Runcorn. And then when me and Dan went to the studio, we were like, right, what's halfway between Chester and Liverpool? Runcorn. Hang on. I know a guy who can get us a cupboard for quite a reasonable price. And you know the theory, though, because you, Jim Jeffries, and Steve Hughes applied the same fucking theory 15, <laughs> yeah. 17 years ago yeah. when you were like, yeah, do you know what? Muswell Hill in London is really expensive to rent That's a flat exactly in. That's exactly why we moved. We'll, we'll move to Manchester. Yeah, well, we were in Walthamstow. So oh, we, weren't right, even, okay. we weren't even as classy as Muswell Hill. We were in Walthamstow, and, uh, you know, yeah, we moved to... Uh, Wally Range, basically. We tried to call it Charlton or Didsbury. We tried, <laughs> we tried to slip that in every now and then. Really, it's Wally Range. And uh, for the price of what we were paying in London, we had a back garden and a driveway and five bedrooms. And yeah, so it was... So, was I, so I've been in Manchester about a year and a half, two years maybe. And um, the scene was basically me, Danny Deegan, <laughs> Seymour Mace... Smug Roberts and some older comics that didn't hang out. And then all of a sudden, Seymour was like, ah, oh, I've got some good news. Yeah. Jason John Whitehead, Steve Hughes, and Jim Jeffries are all moving to Manchester. <laughs> hey, when you're a 23 year old up and coming comic, you're like, oh shit, the three coolest comedians I've met in all my time in comedy, who are also the most fun because they drink and get fucked up, are all moving up here with a budget. Oh, it was so fucking fun. I was uh, so chuffed. Best choice we could have made for our career as well. I mean, there's so it was so much easier to work the country from Manchester. Yeah, because well, Manchester so. is central to yeah. the UK. Yeah. Like, you look at the UK and throw a fucking arrow right down the bullseye. Yeah. You hit fucking Ma the Ma Arndale Centre. I, I, I lived in Manchester for 10 to 11 years and it was great for gigging because yeah. my circuit was off to Sheffield, off to Liverpool, maybe up to Newcastle, maybe down to Birmingham. It's the rest was all with it. Yeah. Like, like Manchester's cracking. I always that. recommend it to young comics. I'm like, don't plunk yourself in London and just no, get I say the same shit thing. there and start fighting for stage time. There's just so many, in, there's independent circuits all around. Rob Riley runs all those. That's why I moved to you Manchester. Just get fucking busy and Do you remember when I met Manchester? you and I was in Newcastle? Right. Craig Campbell yeah. gave me the advice that you give now and that you were just giving then. Craig Campbell, I was like, I'm going to move to London. He was like, don't move to London. Move to a fucking... Like, he basically... He used yeah. an analogy because he was pissed and he's Craig Campbell and he's mental. He's <laughs> yeah. like, move to the fucking woods. Stay, get good in the woods. And then just visit the village. Get good in the woods. Get good in that's, the woods. That's the Sharpen Campbell. your tools. <laughs> Early on, people tried to convince me to move to Manchester. And my arrogance of, no, I love Liverpool. I'm staying in Liverpool. As finally... I've just waited it out because Liverpool has now become like this epicenter right. of the new wave of UK comedy. It's got one of the best comedy clubs on the planet, maybe certainly in the UK. The podcast scene is like of the whole of the UK because of this thing and the, a few others is all out of the northwest of Liverpool. I've just waited it out. I've just been like, you know what? I probably should have moved to Manchester, especially when I couldn't drive. I should have moved to Manchester. Oh, way, would have yeah. been easy to get everywhere. It's all so handy though. Well, we if you live in one, you use the other. Like all the Manchester comics are in Liverpool. All the Liverpool comics go over and man like it's very I know there's like the rivalry. It's a forty five minute drive and it's dead handy, yeah. isn't it? You're yeah. making them come to you. Yeah. You're creating oh, yeah, the hub. I was going to say, we didn't drive either. We didn't fucking drive. Jim did. Jim Jeffries no, definitely did. Because I called either. him a cunt one day no. on, a, on a drive to Southport. <laughs> he was being so annoying. He was being so... Yeah, but see, that's after you knew so him. so Jim Jeffries. <laughs> so unbearably Jim Jeffries. And I looked up to him and I liked him. And he was definitely a few like uh, yeah. steps up the ladder. And Seymour was getting wound up with him. And even me at 23 went, oh, Jim, why are you being such a cunt? And he went, fucking, he was in a mood. No, what I was saying was, we didn't he, drive when we moved up, oh, right, right. but we got a driveway and the driveway stayed empty for maybe the first couple of months. <gasps> but then Jim returned from a gig, from like a Tuesday night gig with a car, pulled up. <laughs> we looked at it like it was just like, we had never seen such a thing <laughs> arrive. And so the he BMW. got the first car. The BMW. And the, no, it was a little beater. It was a little red piece of shit beater that he bought with the fee from his show. <laughs> he, he bought it, he just, it was too late. He partied all night, ended up sleeping somewhere and had no way to get home and dropped like 200 quid on some beater, arrived at our house in Wally Range with a car. And that's when it dawned on us, oh, maybe we can drive in this place. <laughs> 
You know, you got space, more space on the Manchester streets. How and- many drugs and how many drinks have you got to have had to wake up somewhere alien have 200 quid <laughs> and have your first thought be i should buy a car rather than i should call a taxi yeah, let, let's not let's not get a taxi let's buy a taxi <laughs> i'm gonna be a so taxi good. driver <laughs> yeah it was so good going around to your house when i was like you, yeah. you you literally go over you you're definitely the more normal of the three and i'm and, 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 and being a dick about jim he was being objectionable on that drive but jim was always great fun as well and steve hughes who i don't know if you've we've not talked about him loads he's come up recently would be like like doing death metal drumming in his bedroom yeah and then just come down and hang out well, that's what we had with the two spare rooms if somebody wasn't crashing we had it set up as like a studio so he'd be in there on the drums and I tried learning guitar at one point, and I remember Steve Hughes took the guitar from me and learned faster than I had learned, <laughs> put me on the drums. And I remember they were going, I don't want to be a drummer. I wanted to learn guitar, but all of a sudden I'm learning drums so that he can fucking play guitar. He learns, he learns music so quick, but he was a psycho to live with. Living with two Aussies, I'll tell you too, they used to piss in the back garden. Like free range animals. My dad does that. No, I'm a, does your dad, dad do He's that? severely mentally ill as well, like, but yeah, he I've does. Done it. I've, I've done it. I've only got one bathroom in my new house, so. Yeah, but at least, do you at least go to the fence? Because we have a, <laughs> <laughs> we have a whole I don't piss back out the back door. That used to be my problem. I'm you like, stand at the door. They're, they're like, you're so Canadian. I'm like, I'm not, I'm a dude who likes to walk around in bare feet and maybe dip into my garden every now and then. Oh, and I don't want to, and cause they just go five feet outside, let it hang out. I'm like, can you guys just make it to the fence? Get to the fence. J- J- are we allowed to tell the story of the night when it went weird or not? Are, you're acting like it was one night. <laughs> no, 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 the, the break in. Oh, well I wasn't in town for that. Oh shit, so you So I know a there. lot about it, but I was touring Australia at the time. So I, yeah, they just, they called, I was about to go on stage in Australia. And- so me and Seymour had been hanging out in Wally Range, me and Seymour Mace, who lived in Fallowfield. We had a flat yeah. together. So there's a comedian flat there. There's a comedian flat in Wally Range. Yeah. You, had, you guys had a house. This has been mentioned a long time back. We were fucking around and uh, probably there till about midnight, one o'clock. I was like, all right, cool. We're going to go back to Fallowfield. Yeah. And I think left, they thought it was you guys. Left, yeah, left Jim <laughs> Jeffries and Steve Hughes and Jim's girlfriend in the house. And then about half an hour later, some lads broke in with like balaclavas yeah. and a machete. Yeah, and a machete went, and like a hatchet. Get out, we're going to fucking rub the place. And apparently Jim's reaction was, oh, fuck off, damn. <laughs> yeah, they thought it was and you And then fuckers. quickly realized that it wasn't me and Seymour playing a joke. Shit and then got, got held up. And had all their shit robbed. Imagine if that fella yeah. had been called Dan, though. Imagine how, mu- <laughs> how much his head would have fell off. <laughs> yeah. oh, I thought you. you what? Why not the <laughs> What? What a time to be gigging away. Fucking what hell. a time to be gigging it's away. Shocking, man. Um, yeah, th- that's the other thing too. They thought they thought it was you guys. Then uh, they took Jim's car. They piled all the shit into Jim's car, and uh, and got busted because they ran a curb. So if they hadn't run a curb, the cops wouldn't have thought something suspicious here, and they went on the big chase to catch them. I think they got pulled over by the police about a mile and a half from the house. Which, if you're gonna it's such hop, a sad get, I think they chased them through Moss Side. Right. I okay, think there, cool. yeah, like there was like I think they call him RoboCop. This cop who was like leaping fences after these fuckers to to tackle them. So. I love it. See, and you take the piss out of. I have an axe next to my bed. Right? Why Just though? in case something like that happens. You don't Does it have to axe? be an axe though? Like, I have a baseball bat as well. Okay, all right. Yeah, so if someone breaks in, I can be like, choose your weapon <laughs> to, to beat me with. <laughs> what are you doing with the axe? I will put it through his face. Why? Because he's broke into my house, no one wants to leave. So you want to go to jail instead? I wouldn't go to jail, like every other body. I've seen Snatch, pigs. Also, he lives in a penthouse <laughs> flat, way, way up, 14th floor. Hey, I went to the trial. I'll tell you a very funny thing that Jim said at the trial that made everybody laugh in the moment's attention because they were- So pa- was, it, was it two lads? They were yeah, young lads. Yeah, two already. lads. They got, uh, they got like, they're out of prison now, so maybe we should not be careful of how much we're talking <laughs> about. Shut up. They're actually- temp- their names. They're actually temp- temp- Was it? It was Brendan Beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, Mr. Keep, we keep saying the, we keep saying our names and shit. And they're like, that's who we robbed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. It was Johnny Coombs. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. they got twelve and fourteen. Years. They got an extra two years each for drug possession as well, which was mental because it was our and drugs. Twelve years. <laughs> so they got 12. yeah, twelve and fourteen years, and uh, yeah, that one robbery. Yeah, yeah, but we're making quite light of it. 
but they actually got tied up and threatened. It was very lot. serious. It was pretty. It was. It was. So it was beyond home invasion. aggravated. Jim Jeffries has spoken about it on a special. They threatened to rape his girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. So it's a home invasion. They have spoken about it, so we're not. Yeah, we're not like. Rules, yeah. but but I'm sure I'm sure both Jim and Steve probably aren't that comfortable with discussing it. <laughs> well, they're, luckily they're but not. I, here. I, I tell you, very funny because I went and supported them at the trial. I was back home by the time the trial was there, which was very tense as well. Like uh, I you just remember, like uh, Jim's girlfriend on the witness stand and stuff, and that was rough to watch. Like she yeah. could hardly look over at them, and it's very hard too. You're not allowed. If you if you don't uh, adamantly say that you recognize the criminals at the time, like that night when the police show up, and if you're like, I don't know everything then, you're not allowed to then two months later say, no, that's definitely them. You're not allowed. It's You have to say it happened, and then the police have to say these are the ones I, we caught. So the police then have to be the witnesses. So that's an unfortunate thing because you're always in shock when the cops do show up and you want, and you just want to say things like, I'm not really sure. And they were kind of tall and they had, maybe it was a Raiders hat or, you know, you, you, but if you don't know the exact details, they don't hold up in court yeah. months later. Anyway, but luckily the cop was, the cops who caught them were so great at their job and they're the ones. So you just, so you just have to say the event happened. Then the cops get to go, we caught the people from the event. That's what they look like. These are them. So that you need that chain of, okay, yeah, yeah. of evidence that makes sense. to make things work. It, just, it was a funny moment, which is just proves how funny this fucker is. Uh, you know, so tense in the courtroom. The machete was in a big uh, clear tube, right? It's in a big clear tube. In fact, the tube was even bowed at one of the ends because of the size of the machete at the end. And the machete was from our shed. Our little shed out back. So they Aww. went into our yeah, shed. And robbed with your to own get, machete? Yeah, to get the weapons. And the other one was a hammer. That's right. The other one was a hammer. Not an, it was a hammer and it was in a big envelope that was folded over. They passed around the machete while Jim was on the stand. And they went, is that the weapon? Jim's like, yes, that's our machete from our, our back garden shed. And then they had passed around this envelope with the hammer in it. And Jim looks in there. He's like, yeah, that's the hammer. And then they passed it over to the judge. And the judge looks in the envelope, and then the judge just went, um, ladies and gentlemen, this envelope is too big for this piece of evidence. Can we get a more satisfactory sized envelope for this, or can we cut the envelope or something? And then Jim just went, well, there's a big knife right there. <laughs> <laughs> and just cracked everybody up, and I was just like, holy fuck. Even, even in this moment of tension, the motherfucker couldn't, couldn't but help do a little joke did, right Did there. the judge laugh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. He made them all laugh. He made them all laugh. I thought, ah, victory. <laughs> <laughs> Trial At over. At that point, the judge has got to go, do you know what, guilty, life in prison, that's <laughs> yeah, 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 I felt like standing up to the two criminals and going, what do you guys got? Can you follow that? <laughs> I think we're done now. Yeah. Yeah, if you're going to go and watch court cases, go and watch them with world-class comedians. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that's definitely better, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah. I want to go back to the pissing in the garden thing. Are you ever tempted? Do you ever do that? Ever, what? Cool. Yeah, I've talked about. Yeah, I love he's, it. He's shit in the garden. I, I love it. it. Oh yeah. Uh, that that now. No, you did a poo when you. I was garden. absolutely <laughs> hammered. That was bad form. I regretted that. But I, I we in the garden freely. A bush we. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you said great. a bush we though. You get to the to the bush. Yes. See, the thing about these Aussies, sometimes, the yeah. thing about living with Aussies is, I'm telling you, they go because I'll I'll go for a garden we like. There's you know that's easy, but I. You gotta get to your border. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. gotta, you gotta get to the outskirts. Yeah, yeah. Of yeah I'll the give garden. you that. Sometimes I Can don't. Can I just that. ask all of you, you included actually, and you, and you, and me dad, and any, and Steve Hughes <laughs> and Jim? Question: <laughs> If your neighbour caught you doing that, it's my fucking domicile. They can fuck off. <laughs> yeah, doesn't work right. like that. Yeah, no, I mean, you no. Can tell you if they're looking at my cock no. in my garden, it's not illegal. Yeah, but that's. <laughs> a, that's that's a bad precedent because that means you can flash people who are walking past your house. No, yeah, it's yeah, not. Yeah. My God! Yeah, if you start wanking and they see you through the trellis, yeah. you're still it's still indecent exposure, isn't it? No, yeah, it's not illegal to be naked anywhere in the country, especially not in your own garden. Google. It is. It is to be wanking furiously while making. You can wank in your own garden, a hundred percent. Bollocks to you. You can. I don't because I've got a small yard. So yeah, but you gotta not, keep it private. You can't a do small it within yard, public no, view. No, uh, no, it's not for public view, it's your house. 
It, it is. It's, you, my house is in public view. Of yeah, but other, your garden is people. You can't wank in your window. He's not this a legal is the expert. weirdest. You're making up rules <laughs> I here. Know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 lads. It's my living room. Middle of winter. Lights on. Curtains open. Wanking. Oh, you're looking in school, kids, are you? Well, it's my living room. You pervs. It doesn't work like that. I'm in yeah. my garden having a piss, and someone yeah. looks at my cock. That is on them. I know you better than you know your bastard self. And then it's not a chance. What's your next door neighbor's name, first name? I'm not saying that. Why? Which, the boy or the girl? Brendan. The boy. Because he's all about privacy. Right, the boy. What's his name? Sam. Sam. So you're telling me you're caught pissing in your back garden and Sam locks eyes with you and goes- How's he doing that? How what? tall do you think I am? <laughs> We've got fucking walls in the garden. How am I locking eyes with him? He's, he's, I'd have to be looking at his window like that. <laughs> yeah, but not everyone has your walls. Some right. people have lower fences. No, if I have the walls, that's right. all that matters. It doesn't matter how low their fences are. It doesn't make mine lower. No, but I mean, if, if between your gardens, it's not quite as high, the border. No, I've got walls around my garden. Right. You would have to look over. If yeah, they cool. caught you, what would your response be? Because it wouldn't be, hey, Sam, mind your own fucking cock and business, mate. Like this can't. is my cock and my <laughs> land. I think if I'm urinating in the garden, it's away from windows. It's not in the middle of the garden. Like I have done it in the middle. They did. And if I turned around and he was in his window, I'd be like, eh. Yeah. Get up. What would you do? How would you explain yourself? My I, 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 if I'm sober, I'm aware not to piss like fake. Like how mental would you have to be to walk into the middle of the garden, <laughs> yeah, turn man. around, face back towards the house as they're doing the washing up? Just be like, <laughs> My garden, <laughs> fuck you. Oh, ah. God, you reminded me of Steve Hughes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like, he, he does breeze. I get little weird patches of grass now. I don't know. There's so much sneak in my, in my piss oh. that the grass is like, oh my God. Look, cold that's the difference. Ten. I had a hammock in our back garden and they had piss patches. That's the difference between oh. a Canadian and an Australian. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can do whatever you want in your own garden. You can. Yeah. No, you can't. It's not. It's not a rule. <laughs> you, you are not legal. You don't know anything. I like, yeah, if you walk, anything. if you walk in my house and I've got an axe, I can smash that axe into your fucking forehead, and I walk free, the king of the axe forehead. That's it. Like, yeah, but it's the same bullshit. It no, it isn't. You me can't. pissing in my garden not the same as me putting an axe in someone's head. But you just said I you could do what you want. I would be more likely to get away with an axe murder than you would wanking in the window of passing children. No, I, we said garden, yeah, not you can't wanking do in what the you, Oh my god, oh. let's move on. Jesus, Carl. You guys really um, solved the world's problems he really, on this puppy. I tell you what, yeah. he will not stand out. That's how they've not killed each other with an axe and him pissing on him. I killed you with an axe, but I'm pissing on you. It's my garden. I can't piss on dead bodies. I've got walls. You can do whatever you want in your backyard. But I Sam. <laughs> yeah, he's dead. Oh, God. Where are you living in California? Where Are you LA, baby? So I'm, yeah. Oh, my God, you're I'm so actually, LA. I'm actually in Hollywood. Which is Fuck not off. as cool as I thought it would. It's. Have you been to Hollywood? Isn't it a shithole? It's a shithole. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't know. Mm. I thought this is going to be really cool. I'm right by the Walk of Fame. Actually, I do. I still like it. I yeah, like yeah, it. Yeah, okay. But, but I'm not going to deny. It's not your forever house. Is it that occasionally <laughs> smells. Well, I mean, it's hot, desert hot. It smells like hot piss. Oh, frequently no. on the streets of Hollywood. Yeah, you know? but it's your flat and, and you can uh, do what you want. <laughs> That's right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm just off the Walk of Fame and um, yeah, do like even the gym, in, my gym in Hollywood is dodgy as fuck. You know, somebody took a shit in the urinal Oh, God. Uh, recently, oh, God. and uh, and just and it just stayed there all day. Oh no! <laughs> like, nobody lot. wants to go. So it's not the classy place. Like it's not where the Kardashians live. No, is it a is it a beautiful place or is it just basically LA, porn stars trying general. to find their like? I just imagine there's a lot of porn stars, a lot of like uh, fake the, fake tits and whatnot. There's. There's a fair bit of that. All right, okay. I mean, you can find it if you yeah, want. Yeah, more than Runcorn, because if you're an aspiring <laughs> porn star yeah. and you've moved to Runcorn, you're fucking stupid. Yeah, it's got you got everything. You got your Scientology buildings out of nowhere, which are, that's a weird thing to see. Like, they de dominate certain parts of the landscape sometimes. You're like, oh, oh wow. my God, a big that's purple awesome. Scientology yeah. building by where, where I live. You're like, oh, wow. It's you know what they believe, don't you? Uh, <laughs> I'm not. Do you want to clear me in? Do you want to clear me in? I mean, on, on, on top of money. <laughs> what do Scientologists believe in? Adam? They believe the that Cruise. we're all aliens. Right. And that some fella called Ron dropped us off. L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> well, yeah. he's the. To he's populate the, the earth, and he got off, and he was like, I'll leave them there for a bit, and he's going to come back one day and take us all to essentially the Disneyland of space. Cool. You can see why That's you'd want a big best purple building. Summary of what it is that I've ever heard. <laughs> 
Disneyland. It's, I've never heard a Scientologist describe it yeah. that way. But yeah, that's, that's, that's why Tom Cruise is that into it. What's Tom yeah. Cruise's role in all this? Tom Cruise. Yeah. He's, he's like, a pilot. He's like well, their he's, pope. Yeah. He's, he's like their pope. Level. Yeah. So they have levels that you got to work up through, like rank, and you get rankings. Yeah, he's like um, an ambassador. Dianetics. Use, yeah. use code CRUISE10 if you want 10% <laughs> off your first Scientology. Well, didn't John Travolta's kid die because he wouldn't take him to get the... Med- no, that's because he's um, a psychopath. No, he's a different thing that doesn't let them have um, medicine. Oh, I, Jehovah. Thought it, I thought it was Scientology. No, I think he might have ended up there at some point, but he, when that happened, it was because he's like a, a, a Mormon or something. The, the lack of facts we <laughs> offer. They're Mormon Scientologists yeah. going to space Disneyland. I'm learning more than I thought. Are you not interested in joining Scientology? Now you live in Hollywood? Definitely not. Why? No, I don't. I don't. I'm joining it just of... to try and blow it all open from the inside. <laughs> yeah, no one's ever tried that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Turn yeah. up with his axe. No, I don't want to join any pyramid schemes. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Isn't no, it's not really interesting. I'd in love that. to expose Scientology. Imagine being the guy who did that. But Louis, imagine you got Louis into Theroux. it and you're like, actually, they Louis fucking Theroux. sorted this and it turns out they're right. I think that's what's happening. Yeah. People are going in trying to expose it and they're like, oh my I God. I think with your level of expertise, you're the man that can do it. <laughs> are you Mormons or something? <laughs> are you John Travolta's or Tom Cruise's? Which one's this? <laughs> what's the, Show uh, up at the gates of, of, of fucking Scientology, but just with your Mickey Mouse ears <laughs> on. Like, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Count me in, everybody. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I would He'd be running it. <laughs> He'd be fucking running it. No, no, fucking no. hell, never mind Patreon, Scientology. <laughs> fucking loaded. How many fucking pubes have you got? Oh my god. Uh what's the comedy scene like out there? We asked uh, John Hastings this when he when he came on the couch. Yeah. It's very different. Yeah. I mean I miss I definitely favor the British com- yeah. comedy scene and comedy s- style of Yeah, like I like. So, I what's like, your working week, Lola? I know you do. You do you support Jim on tour a lot? I do. Yeah. But if I you're do not doing that, what's well, the what's the sort of comics yeah, working week? Because I only do his American work. Right. I don't do when I tour here. I do my own stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Australian stuff. That's all yeah, in yeah, Canada. Yeah. That's all under my own name. Like oh, Jim's in Australia right now. He's got his. He's with Amos Gill. Does his yes. support spots in Oz, Australia for him. So my working week. I mean, it's been different since the pandemic. So you know, but. To be honest, writing the Jim Jeffries show when we were doing that, uh, that was three years. That was that was the best. You know, that was in the writers' room nine to six every day, five days a week. So that was pretty great. Proper job. It was like, but it was so easy to get into because if you're once you're writing jokes for TV, it's like I couldn't. It turned me into a morning person because <laughs> I definitely wasn't. Fifteen years living here, I definitely wasn't a fucking morning person. You know, I was get get out of bed just in time to get to the comedy yeah, store. Yeah. Do you know what I realised recently? I'm a morning person. I just don't like the first hour. Well, that's what, you know, coffee. But once once I get that first hour out of the way, the, like, why are you looking at me like I've got seven They dicks? don't believe it. Because your morning starts at 11 o'clock. So no, that first no, no. hour then goes into the afternoon. No, yeah, no, that's no, not no, what a no, person no. Is. This is what I'm saying. I've always thought I'm that guy. <laughs> right? Because you've always been that guy. <laughs> because I've always been that guy. Yeah. Right? It turns out I've been living a lie. <laughs> so what happened was last week I had a meeting in Manchester mm. so I got up at like I think I had to get up at like 6 so I, I was ready for 7 right because that gave me time to sort of amble around have a coffee get a shot read the book <laughs> learn <Wow>. Spanish <laughs> he's had one morning non hungover he's like I'm a fucking morning person <laughs> next morning 11.30am next morning midday go on yeah. no because I was drunk those times and that doesn't count so the next time I, I got up at six o'clock, I was ready by seven. I um, I, I drove to Manchester, had a little coffee, yeah, outside uh, Cafe Nero, Manchester. That was wonderful. Got stopped by uh, a listener whose head fell off, which was really funny. And then someone else commented and said they'd seen us there on the thing, which really made me laugh. Um, then I had a meeting, nine o'clock. That was cool, very exciting. And then I just, it was 10 a.m. And I'd already, I'd like loads of stuff done. And I just felt really good. <laughs> Hang on. No. Wait a minute. So you're saying one time it happened. <laughs> so you think you could one be one morning? <laughs> one fucking morning. So Lad could I'm be. I'm sorry, me alarm. I'm gonna have to make it half eleven. I'm just getting Get deja out. Getting deja <laughs> oh, it's deja yeah. And then I and then I wrote a book. I was gonna read one. I thought, fuck, I'll write one. 
I had me coffee. Somebody if, was nice to me if about you, a thing. It if was you great. were a it part, even 10 if yet. you were this part of a amazing. writing room and you had to be there every morning, Monday to Friday, nine a.m., I reckon you'd I'd be, be flying, fuming by week two. I wouldn't. What was it like? What was it like? I think I, I know it's comedians <laughs> pretending to be full time, or is that real? Like in a <laughs> talk such shit in the writing room. Is it like? Is it everyone being proper and professional? Or is it just comics? Sitting around fucking about. It all depends. I mean, we had a mix on our show. We had comedians and we had people who came up through improv. I think this is, I think comedians, stand-up comedians have a different sense of humor, I think, than some of the, the American improv, improv-y type. I'm still trying to figure them out to this yeah. day. <laughs> so there's two different ilks in, a, in an American writer's room, you know. Yeah. But comedians have far less boundaries, I think, weirdly enough, than the, yeah, than yeah. the, imp, than the <laughs> improv people. Yeah. So, uh but, you know, yeah, it's uh, full of good banter and, you know, you, you chug, you come in with, basically, we filmed on Tuesdays, so Wednesdays was just shooting the shit, you know, Thursdays was start getting your first scripts ready, Friday was have them into the head writer, and then the head writer takes those, puts them into a, a, an overall script, you know, does a hard edit, kill your babies, as they yeah. say, kill some of the babies and put together one script, and then by Friday afternoon, we see that one script we think about it over the weekend and then we come in to punch it up on Monday and then we film it on Tuesday. And it's a great, I mean, it's a treat, you know, as a stand up, uh, I was like, this, this is the best getting my jokes on, you know, if once you get them in Jim's mouth or once you tell that he's inspired to do them, you're like, ah, oh, this is going to be fun yeah, to yeah. watch. And, it, and you like writing, I mean, you've been mates 20, 25 years. Yeah. You learn to, because you've got similar sense of. Well, he's yeah, but, but he's also he also is a bit of a gift though because he's fucking good. You know, he's, <laughs> he's so fucking good. Like even when you have a joke that you know the idea is there, but you haven't found the wording yet, he'll stumble it onto it. He'll he'll see it. So you so can, you sort of tune into writing for Jim and then and then yeah. know that. Well, because it was political. The fucked up thing is it was political comedy too, and Jim's not. A political, you know, comedian. Although he has done some, you know, we're it was just, the gun just, control routine yeah, sort just, of gave him just this. Like, sort anything. Of like we're comedians, ah. we just call out bullshit. We yeah. call out bullshit when we do, and occasionally that bullshit seems to coincide with politics. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then some people see that and they go, "You must be a political humorist." We're like, no, no, we're just calling bullshit on certain things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is the job so, of a comedian, isn't it? And that's the job of a this comedian. This is weird. So. Life's weird. That's yeah. fucked up. Yeah, and here's a funny thing from that yeah, weird yeah, shit. Yeah. 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 If it happens no to be then like yeah. part of the zeitgeist or political. Yeah, no doubt. Some comics go. That is what I want to do. I always want to. I want to study up on what's going on with Boris right now. Or but there's whatever, not many but good ones of those. You know. Well. There is to their community, yeah, yeah. right? Like, yeah, yeah. not maybe not to us because, <laughs> because we like more. We probably like more kind of social satire and some fucked yeah. up stories and you know yeah, yeah. mental Absolutely. thoughts about the human condition kind of stuff. But that would be uh, what you would have to do is like we had researchers, so huh? they would give us some research on it. We would write the jokes, and so a lot of times Jim was learning it for the first time too. <laughs> so Jim could be there on the writers' room on the Friday looking at that first script, going. So what happened? <laughs> <laughs> what was uh, uh, what was the Jim Jeffrey show? I don't know. Maybe some listeners don't. It know. It was a, an American like sort of you know, they, they look like it looks like a news anchor sat at a news desk. Yeah. You know those right, okay. John yeah. Oliver, um, so like Trevor stuff? Noah, those sort of right, okay. two camera sort of fake TV screen here with visual yeah. prompts for each monologues. And was it guests in response to the Daily Show going from John Stewart to? Trevor Noah. It felt felt like there was a little bit of a, a sort of a moving around of the. There was a little bit of a power shift, wasn't there, on the daily? Yeah, uh, the I also think Amer it was just the most popular format. Yeah, popular format, and Jim had just exploded because Bear yeah, was so and good. Jim was like, "This this will be." It was a Jim Jeffries twist on this popular yeah. format because we knew we could be a little bit edgier, yeah, maybe than than even the Daily Show, and you know, stretch the rules a little bit, and gosh, which I think we did for, you know, for it those. was very 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 good. Yeah, it was um, fun. I got a question for you that I don't know whether we've touched on this before. If another comic came to you, and I'm not talking for a TV show, I think that's a totally different thing, and I think we'd all love to have an opportunity like that, especially for a friend of ours who we enjoy writing for. If a comic asked you to help write their stand-up, would you do it? Uh, yeah, if they were an absolute giant. Yeah? Yeah, I, I remember with Lee Evans, when he was trying new material for his last tour, I watched the writing process happen, 
And I thought, these dudes are obviously brilliant at what they do, and they've gone too far down this route of getting it done. Lee Evans could have done with some really good, younger circuit comedians to write for them because they'd gone so far down that, oh, we, we write our jokes, and there's loads of them, and then we go and do six weekends at the Glees and try them all out, whittle it down, and t put it on tour. And the jokes just, they seemed outdated. They seemed like they were being written in a style that probably worked brilliantly at the start of the 2000s or whatever. And I remember thinking, I've got old material. But I, do you remember my bit about um, Jaeger bombs and the walk of shame? Yeah. which was an early bit of my stand-up. And it was when talking about Jaeger bombs and a walk of shame wasn't cliched like it was before the film Walk of Shame. It was, it was a newer thing. I remember thinking, Lee Evans would fucking nail that bit. It would be hilarious. I would, it, there was a, a part of me wanting to be like, I would love to give a comedian who I respect, never my favourite comedian, but a legend, like, an, like that sort of input. And if there was a three or four comedian team doing the same thing I think that last tour of Lee Evans could have been even better not that it was shit or anything but it just lacked a little bit of like a spark and if it was for someone like that almost in tribute to what they've achieved and what they've done then yeah any other new comic I'd be like man I'm writing my own bits I yeah that. but also when you're touring like, when you're touring, how many acts are you touring with? you got a support act going with you and stuff like that. Yeah. And I've got my, my, my show's running at, did a, my eighth preview last night. Yeah. It's running at 55 minutes, and the first section I'm doing crowd work, there's a few bits in there. Yeah, and so don't, I'm, you, don't you have a new comic touring with you, though, that you're bantering with and you're bouncing yeah. some ideas off of? Yeah, I've got, there's a few like guys. And like, but crucially for yeah. me, that tour ends on November 20th, right. and I've got to have a new, new tour show by the summer. So I haven't got a lot of, it's not like I'm having so many ideas that I can be giving them away. I had a comic yeah. come to me who's a, a arena level comic who came to me who I actually really respect and think is really good and they were like, look, I use writers when I'm putting my stand-up together. Do you yeah. want to write with me for me next tour? And I said no. I think he was a bit surprised when I said no. But I was right. like, no. And he was like, oh, really? And I was like, to be honest with you, like, I'm trying to catch you up. And if I yeah. write a good bit, I fucking want it. <laughs> right. Like, well, well, I got to admit, like, writing for the Jim Jeffries show, there was a couple times where I wrote a bit, uh, which I knew would work in my stand-up, and uh, sometimes, you're fi sometimes you fight for a bit to get it on the show, but sometimes when I knew, like, oh, I'd like to have this, and if the head writer uh, didn't, if it didn't make the first, I'm like, I'm not fighting to get that on the show, <laughs> and I'm straight out to, I'll do, I'll do one tonight for you, that I'm, that, I'm like, that I'm still like, oh, I love that this didn't make it into the show because it's just become mine, it's yeah, become yeah. my routine. Yeah. So, you, so you get a little bit of that, but on the other, conversely, there are times where, where you're writing something, you're like, like you were saying, it would be sounding better in uh, Lee Evans's. uh, voice yeah you know so every now and then you get those and that's that's when you can you know really push that onto yeah, it i'd have done that a friend as a bit of a a one-off and a trip like there's very few comics like i know i know the kind of guys we're talking about the household names in this country yeah. well, i like them all i think the sound but yeah I, like i want to all the best stuff i have if i spent too much time on that i'd be like why am i not spending time on my stuff yeah yeah i just didn't want to do it if i ever had a bit that i was like eh and a comic was like, can I buy that? I'd be like, okay. Like, if I wasn't yeah. that ass. See, yeah. But, like, if I love a bit, I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. You're not having first refusal on my best idea <laughs> yeah. in weeks. So Scott, yeah. Scott Bennett, my mate Scott Bennett, who's been on, he writes for other comics. And I've seen him after he's been in a writer's room for a week. Like, a few years ago, we were both like, we really need to step it up. And I was like, I'm going podcasting. Really feel that's where... I can go. And he was like, I'm going right in. I want to really want to develop that. And he's, and he's done really well. And we've done what we've done. And I've gigged with him on the Saturday after he's done a week in, like he's been writing with Jason Cook and Chris Ramsey. And he's trying exactly like you said. He's like, got some new bits that got rejected. I reckon they're going <laughs> to yeah. work. And they're fucking, <laughs> they work because they're topical. Like, yeah. I'm not a big fan of topical comedy because it, for me, like that, my writing process doesn't happen that quickly. And then all of a sudden you've got a joke that works and then it just looks lame in two months. And right. there's nothing worse than the comedian who's like, so who remembers the London Olympics? You're like, it was a long time ago, dickhead. Yeah. But if you've genuinely written a joke that week that's a fucking zinger, it's great. You look like a brilliant comic. But uh, just I, I would, it would be like giving kids up, it would be like a surrogate 
fucking parent. When it, what do they call it when you? So you, you ha- yeah. How long do you reckon COVID's weird. got? How's that? Oh, it's, I think COVID is. Yeah, it's done. I think you have to have an exceptional joke, and. I think we are nearing yeah. the end to the point where people are just I like, hate the fact that the special I've got coming out in September has got any sort of reference to COVID in it. Yeah. I only do my COVID jokes now if somebody coughs. <laughs> then that's, <laughs> that's, then the that's my end. But if not, I'm taking us out of that world. We're hey, just going to do some stand-up. The new uh, stuff yeah. I'm going to start doing in a couple of weeks, I, I will pretend the pandemic never happened. I think that's all, yeah. yeah. The, the one who were like, hey, did you have a good lockdown? You're like, oh, okay. that, we're out of that now. We're you out of so that. In five years, you would still be leaning on it though. 100%. I bet you. Oh. Yeah, there was of course you will. Because there's COVID. some absolute COVID. lazy shite. That's why. Yeah. Is anybody still doing foot and mouth disease? <laughs> <laughs> I was. I lived. They here are, but they now shit. make when, it COVID. When was that? That was like 2003 or some <laughs> shit, wasn't it? Foot and mouth. Remember that? We had vinegar pet. Look, I'm doing it now. We had <laughs> my school trip to Colomendi got cancelled because of foot and mouth disease. Foot That's and how mouth, long baby. Was. When I was on holiday, I went on holiday two, three weeks ago. When uh, there was like a little, I needed a book. There was a uh, Fifty Shades of Grey on the. Should have asked me. I've got loads. The, the, you should have written one for me. Just like send it over in the WhatsApp group. Um, <laughs> like when holiday makers have left a book behind and then they just leave them on a little shelf, like a little fucking hotel library. There was Fifty Shades of Grey, and oh. I was so tempted to get it, pretend I was reading it, and be like, "Ah, oh, I can't wait to write some mater- like really lazy fucking material about <laughs> this and perform it in 2016 and 17." Because there is a, it, there's like eras of hacky bits. Right. And like foot and mouth, COVID now. F- when Fifty Shades of Grey came out, oh, the amount, you'd be at a comedy club yeah. and like, I don't know, like Fifty Shades of Grey, like, oh, fuck. I and that got replaced was, by Brexit. Yeah. And before that, it was Fritzel. I think there, there was, was an eruption about of Fritzl. fan porn or whatever, fan fantasy, you know, scripted porn between characters and stuff all around Fifty Shades of Grey as well. But uh, the, there's, there's certain things that just get in comedians' heads. Yeah, because yeah, there's so much to write about, though. COVID was so bad. But, but it gets dull so fucking yeah, quick, it gets, doesn't it? It's like Twitter. The joke gets rammed and, and then it's done, isn't it? Yeah, quick. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, hopefully COVID is Romeo done. Yeah, but even if it comes back, I'm not writing jokes about it. You know, if they're like, oh, it's bad again, so we'll all get back inside when I, I come out. Be I know, I heard, uh, if they did that again, you know. If they tried to do it again. A comic said monkeypox this weekend at one of my gigs, and it got nice. a giggle, but I remember thinking, okay, we're going to Can we be done with that one soon? Um, let's have a break, and uh, let's have a, a short message from uh, a cunt who gives us money. Oh. Oh, that's the air, <laughs> Good intro. Yeah, that's <laughs> Hawaii! Look at those clothes you've got on. Uh, looks like you need to freshen up that summer wardrobe. Sort Why out. don't you use stitchfix.co.uk? Dan, tell them all about it. Basically, it's clothes in a box. You don't have to choose them. They send you stuff. You go, I like that. Not keen on that. What? That looks fit. And then you pay for them. If you go to stitchfix.co.uk slash weird, that's how they know that we sent you. And when you keep all five items that they send you, you get 20% off. Just to reiterate what this is, like having your own personal shopper. They know what you like. They know what you don't like. They know your sizes. They will send you five items that they think you're going to love. If you keep all five, you get 20% off. It's just like get one item free. It's you know the what I mean? summer. Change it up. Lighten up your things. Get some vests, short sleeves, shirts, shorts. <laughs> It's summer. You need to change it up and you need stitch fix. Ankle socks, whatever you like. They will literally send whatever they think you're going to like, they'll send to you. And you need to go to stitchfix.co.uk forward slash word. That lets them know that we sent you and you get 20% off when you keep all five items. That is stitchfix.co.uk forward slash word. Welcome back. Final section of today's Have a Word Pod with JJ. What are you Whitehead? drinking then? Oh, <laughs> thanks for asking, Adam. Smooth. I'm. Dr- Cut to me. <laughs> I'm drinking uh, the energy drink Sneak, and you can use code Word10 at checkout for a discount, maybe, and then just to let them know that we've sent you Sneak. It's good. You've Sneak. changed. Sure. You've changed. <laughs> oh, <now>. You've <laughs> changed. <laughs> but honestly, <laughs> big enough fucking. <laughs> I, I, I'm ch- chow down on that dick. There's only 50 codes, so make sure you use it. Yeah, it's a slightly weird system. Just make sure you put Word 10 somewhere in the fucking ordering process. But it is dead nice. And it's not, they're not full of sugar like other energy drinks. And um, they're going to pick one random person who buys this month to go on a ski trip. Yeah. <laughs> that could be you. Maybe it is, isn't it? Steve's least favourite part of this. <laughs> so you'll notice when we do adverts, there is, there is this game with doing the adverts. It doesn't even matter if it's just a quick mention for Sneak. 
Adam gets bored of the corporate thing and then at the end just starts adding shit in. There's so many good adverts that we've done and we've nailed it. And then Adam's going, yeah, so buy it, you fucking pedophile. <laughs> if we sell two million bottles of sneak this month, oh. then they're going to donate 10 grand to the World AIDS charity to try and cure it. World AIDS charity, the whack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, the famous whack. That's quite minuscule. Well, like, they two million chatting. bottles and they're only given 10 grand. They reckon it's only 10 grand away from curing it. They're just uh, going to push it on the edge. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've said they'll pay for the rest. <laughs> so, <laughs> so whack 10K. We'll cover the AIDS. Uh, that's fact. These are all facts. <laughs> we, just, we literally just deal in facts. Whack 10K is the hashtag. Well, they just yeah. Hashtag. We sell 3 million, they're going to give one lucky blind person a new dog. <laughs> right. And they hadn't got one before. <laughs> or two dogs. No, not every blind person's got I, a dog. There's, oh, a, right. there's a dog shortage for the blind. There is, is there? Yeah. Yeah. Because of COVID. Are they using they can't get the materials. They got, can't get the materials to make dogs. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, it's the jackets. You know, Do you the, that's possible? You know the fluorescent jackets? They've run out of them. They might run out of dogs at one point. Do you reckon there's more blind people than blind people dogs? Did you, you just say they might run out of dogs at one yeah, point? Yeah, as in like worker dogs. No, Carl, that's absolutely ridiculous. But what animal would you like to use if they run out of dogs exactly. for blind Hyenas. people? Hyenas. Guide hyena. Peacocks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for the blind. You guys, will know you're coming. Way. He's blind. <laughs> He's coming. Here he goes. <laughs> I'm coming for some pee hand pussy. <laughs> Spot the blind guy. You have to be a black. You have to be black to have a peacock as your guide dog, don't you? <laughs> oh la! Oh, wow. Here it comes. Ah. You've got to bring some flavour. Yeah, yeah. I can't be peacock. I'll go with peacock. I can't. Alligator. Be. Oh, he likes you. All of Adams hurt people. He's just smelling your alligator. Oh, he likes you. That's why you have one leg. Um, I'm just saying, watch out. <laughs> If they sell four million, <laughs> Carl's public health warnings are amazing. <laughs> Open bodies of water and crocodile guide dogs. Watch out! Yeah. Watch it. Four Good million on. and one dying child gets to go paragliding one last time. One last time. One last time. <laughs> one last time. That's how they kill him. <laughs> <laughs> it's in Switzerland. Um, Open bodies of water. Be careful. There's people. Dying. Oh, shut up! There's Carl, already you been like fucking quarry nonce. There's already been like four kids die this year. Natural selection. Uh, would you rather? <laughs> brutal. Uh, should we do some would you rather's? JJ, no, we I don't want to. Let's hear we, it. We live and die by these. Would you rather no. go without booze for one calendar year? You're off the source, mate. Or every time you leave the house for that year, you have to constantly use an electric mobility scooter. What do you would you rather? What would you rather? Can I pimp up my mobility scooter? I th I've seen this with the mobility. Have you seen the one that looks like a chopper? You know, like the Easy Rider one? Yeah. They've got a little bit of a handlebar, like, and it is just an electric nano scooter, but they've made it into like a, 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 a which Harley. Is, which is perfect because it means you can still be on the booze. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and drive. It's not drink driving on one of them, is it? No. I know, but you, every time you leave the house, you're not allowed to walk anywhere. You've got to be on. Oh, I don't have to walk anywhere anymore. You make it sound like that's a bad thing. This it, is actually, so, it, like, it's... I want a pint and I like mobility scooters. So this is win-win for me. Really. Yeah, I feel like. <laughs> so you're on a gig on a mobility scooter. Because I can year. soup it up, can't I? I can make it look like a Harley. Oh, can we oh, can put a fucking can we walk Mustang's around engine on it? What? Can no, we you, take the, oh no, you, once you're. You have to be in the pub. Yeah. On you the don't have to ride the mobility scooter to the toilet for a shit when you're at home. I'll give you that. But once you're out the house, <laughs> you are a constant mobility scooter. So you have to Guinness in one hand. Uh, you're you're a single man. What if you're taking out a lady? What if you're dancing in the? You have to go to Pop World in the mobility scooter. I just want the reverse, stairs forward, be like reverse, that. forward. I'm quite happy to just forgo Pop World in order to be able to have pints elsewhere. You'd have to be carried into Pogues. Yeah, would you? Oh. You know, but the other <laughs> option is I'd be walking to Pogues and have to have kind of a lime and lemonade. That would seem like a poor decision on your part. Isn't it? You're still going Pogues? <laughs> yes, I can't drink, <laughs> but it's three a.m. and I love the atmosphere. Yeah. Can you do a two? Can you do a two-step in a mobility scooter? What's like a dance? Just rock it. Yeah. <laughs> Just move your shoulders. <laughs> yeah, you can do all this. I think you'd suit a mobility scooter. Do you remember that? You know, you me? want to get ripped. Go the other way. Just get world-class fat. I, can't, I don't want to do that. Just I'll hate myself. Yeah, dead fat. You won't if you've been able oh, to soup up. People the, are disgusted. If you, but if you've <laughs> souped up the scooter, it's fine. Do you remember the kid in Envy in the wheelchair there every week? Remember. And he had a carer with him. He used to boogie as well. Oh. 
Yeah. You do. I don't. Every single week, there was a man in a nightclub we used to frequent, and he was in a wheelchair <laughs> on the dance floor, dancing, and his carer was always there with like a WKD next to him, boogieing. Every single week. Can't believe you forgot that. Oh, that, yeah. Yeah, that'll be you. You'll be the carer. Adam will be the <laughs> me, me, forward. Oh, just use. He'll drive you home at the end of the night. <laughs> yeah, you've got a lift. scooter. Because yeah. it's not drink driving. <laughs> I, but you could put a jet engine on your mobility scooter. <laughs> I think this is you us do 70 miles an hour. It's still not drink driving. Yeah. What yeah. is the difference between yeah. a street truck mobility scooter and a motorbike? Um, like legally. About, about 40 miles an hour. <laughs> 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 but is it the speed that makes it. I assume so. Top speed. Because you can it? get all those electric scooters and all that stuff around LA. They top out at like there's a rule. I don't know 20, what it is, I think but it's it, twenty is or it twenty. Yeah, twenty or twenty five or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you're not allowed to to get them going faster than that. That's the law. That's how they make it legal. I mean, wheel size as well. So can I drive like a Ford Focus at fifteen miles an hour and it's not drink driving? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay, we, you can't. Even next be, you can't even be sitting in your Ford Focus shit faced. And, and that that yeah, if you're sitting in there with the keys, that's that string drive. Even if you're not moving, that guy, I'd I'd yeah. win that in court, mate. I'm get, telling you right now. What, if, you, if I was in court and they were like, "You drink driving," I'd be like, "I fucking wasn't driving. I was on the back seat being yeah, sick." You can get drink busted sitting. for that though. You're not allowed to pay um, contactless in Mackey's drive through because you're on your phone while you're driving. You're not allowed to do that. You are with games. the card. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, but if you, you mean you, Apple Pay, Apple Pay, you can't Apple Pay with your card in McDonald's drive through. It's against the law. Yeah. What? They won't let you. No, you do, because no one gives a fuck. But legally, you're in control of a car with a mobile phone in your hand, which you can't do. Uh, yeah. yeah. That doesn't track to me. Yeah, it's true. That yeah, but up. if you're in a McDonald's drive-thru in your garden, <laughs> you what the fuck you want. <laughs> I'll, I, I will die on that hill. I'd like it. I'd like a... I'd go a year... <laughs> I don't want to go out booze for you. I absolutely right. need yeah, to I go out with that booze for you. I don't think it's even close. There's not. No. It's not even a comparison. So you're, we're all going mobility scooters. Yeah, just you're like you're making it easier for me I to be hungover. Sponsor you're me mobility scooters. You're literally scooter. making it easier for me to be hungover. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, you're getting no, you're getting no sex. You're getting what? no. You're not meeting any ladies on a mobility scooter, are you? I will pick it up on me mobility scooter. Yeah, to crazy the yeah. drunk ones. You just, just, just put her in the basket. Let's get in the basket, baby. Let's get go him, home. Babe, I am your Uber. <laughs> Just say everything works. I'm just not allowed to walk. Huh? But I can bum. Yeah. <laughs> Good. You, you say you've never had a one night stand. <laughs> everything works, but I can bum. <laughs> wag we wag lids. A, we were to- sorry, one sec. We were talking in the first half. Wag, wag. wag wag lids. Yeah. I start. No, I'm good. Car- Carl's never had to woo a lady on a night towers. He's never had to pull because he's been in a relationship since he was nine. <laughs> not nine. 19. What? Yeah. All right. Yeah. And then before that, I was in a relationship. I'm a serial monogamist. I've never had a one night stand, is what I'm saying. All right. And uh, has she ever complained? <laughs> can, I, can I ask you a question? Just sure. something from the first half about Dan. So, Dan said if he took a girl back from a night out before he fucked her, he would make her wash. Like, he makes her wash it, jump in the shower, and, you know, clean her fanny. How many times? Yeah, after, has, after I have, you know. Surely that's backfired for you more than it's worked. I like a lot of farmers. You know, like a, I, I really like a farmer's girl. Isn't Fanny for you, like, bum? So, <laughs> Sounds like a website, by the way. Um, well, I, did, I lived here long enough. I can, ad- I can, right, adjust, okay. I can adjust to that lingo. I, I, I get it. I, I like follow. your bum before we <laughs> But, uh, Dan, are you saying that you, you go for this? You go for the stinky women because you know they probably want to wash anyway, and that's oh, a bonus? Satisfying. Come back with me, darling, in that way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I always go for the ones that need a wash. Scare clothes. I didn't, you know, cost me a lot of money. I didn't use protection. I just bought a lot of soap. Um, no, I, yeah. I just don't think there's anything wrong. Getting out after, after a night out, getting a little bit of a wash. It ruins the mood, doesn't it? Well, when it you ruins first the get back, When you first get back and you there's just raw sexual energy and you just want to yeah. rip her clothes oh off and my God. throw it on the bed. And she, and just wants, she just wants to knock you off the mobility scooter. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't see it working. No? Yeah. It ruins the mood? It's, yeah. Oh, that's. I'm really enjoying wash. this moment, but yeah. can you go wash? Yeah. I've, if if I mood. notice that she smells a bit, I'll like overcompensate and compliment how her thing smells so she feels comfortable with it. Uh, whoa. You compliment, <laughs> you've complimented you, the unless, smell of a vagina. Yeah. Like if she gets it off and there's a bit of a whiff, I'll be like, fucking hell. Fresh. Oh. <laughs> that's the face of this podcast right there. Yeah. 
<laughs> Jason is, Jason's not been tuned into this. He's like, oh my God, people don't talk like this. <laughs> well, we do here. I'm a bare psychology. Dad, I was thinking, don't you have Dad, to just- Adam's like, absolutely disgusting. You ask a girl to wash, I will just compliment her. Wow, like a dying bouquet. Ah, cabbage. But I like veg. Have you ever gone? This smells great, by the way. <laughs> Have you ever done that? No, I'm not quite on the nose. No pun intended. I'll just be like, Ooh, you've washed, haven't you? You didn't do enough dancing tonight, Gail. It's not sweaty enough. Uh, you're a bunch of charming fellas. <laughs> Instagram DMs. I like making hey. women feel good about themselves. Instagram DMs. Adam is young, gay, and single. Um, then, wag, wag, does it, do you frequently push it straight to the shower then? Do you take a lady back and then oh, yeah. maybe that way you don't have to put the, you know, put that question on her, then just that, move listen, things into the shower. Hey, no, I'm married now and that lady washes once a week and she does it well. <laughs> That's how I like it. Um, yeah, I just, I, I used to t take the lead, madam, enjoy in a complimentary mint. I <laughs> will be showering. Bald man can happen quickly. And then I'll be like, why right. look, madam, the water is still running. Why not use it? <laughs> like that. Just give her the hint. So dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This all definitely <laughs> happened. Um, wag wag lids. <laughs> I love the pod. Would you rather jeers every time you heard the song Happy Birthday or jeers every time you're at a funeral? That's from a lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> That's very easy. The second one. Funeral. Yeah. Yeah, because right? it could be at a child's birthday. I mean, could be the child. I know, I know. But I it, wasn't even thinking children, no. but I was thinking. I just hear "Happy Birthday" a lot more than I'm at a funeral. Yeah, actually, you just play the numbers, don't you? You can't get too in your head about the situation. Also, you don't have to ever go to a funeral if you don't want to. You can't avoid it. Oh my birthday. god! It's, how bad would that be if you're in fucking Frankie and Benny's, and then all of a sudden you're D -d 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 happy? Ah! You're just fucking knocking garlic bread and cheese. What if, out. What if it has to be a Paul Bear? Huh? What if someone says I want you to carry it? Yeah. Oh yeah, you'd have to say no to that as well. <laughs> well, you get the, you get the jizz out of the way first. Brought me on. Yeah, but if the jizz happened, in fact, that's the worst time. You're not constantly jizzing, are you? Like I it's a two-hour funeral, and you're just the whole time you're the Paul Bear. Like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> that'd be great. It's a two-hour funeral, you're really a fucking. <laughs> yeah, a, Those Canadian funerals go long, don't they? Long climax. <laughs> You don't want to be a Paul Bear if you're like, oh, oh, oh it's happening. <laughs> and there rolls Nana. Let's get through this, boy. I go funeral. I think funeral is the yeah. absolute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On that. It's yeah. Not, so you can avoid yeah. funerals. Yeah, the ha yeah the happy birthday is that's uh, that's awkward. Although yeah. maybe you know if you like jizzing, maybe you start turning up to other people's birthdays anyway. <laughs> Mark Francis says, "Would you rather fuck Katie Price and put up with all the tabloid sh all the tabloid shit she's bound to release, free publicity, or?" Bang Amber Heard and find shit on your bed. Again, it's free publicity when it's leaked to the press. So you have to uh, have sex with one of these notorious ladies. Are they both in their prime? Yeah. To make this I know. I think I think he should be now. It's Amber Heard. Right. Well, I mean, it's so easy this, either way. easy decisions. Oh, yeah. These Amber would you rather say? It's terrible Amber Heard. Heard. It's Amber Heard. They're all, they're all yeah. very easy. Hey, yeah. feel free to do one. <laughs> um, <laughs> Feel free to do. You know you've got all that free time. Feel free. <laughs> it's Amber Heard, isn't it? To prep eight seconds of pop. Amber Heard's a beautiful yeah. woman. Yeah. No, it's Kate Price. Oh no, it's Kate Price. She's an entrepreneur, <laughs> businesswoman. She's got an interesting family. You know, and you meet them. <laughs> Maybe. Well, we already know you're you're a very uh, what is it a clean you know you get you make them wash so you obviously don't want the one that shits in the bed. Yeah. So we knew where you would go. Well, so I've been with women who shit in the bed before. They're actually quite nice people when you I get to know them. I don't, you keep mentioning this woman. <laughs> like, is it not relevant? <laughs> it's, it's not like we're talking about being on the fucking beach, is it? It's, <laughs> this has this, this, this affected you, this. How this would you deal with this? He was with a lady. He went in the back way. And then later on, she pooed in the bed. Right. How would you? Accept it? Yeah. 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 I cleaned the bed. Shit happens. He goes to two-hour funerals. Literally shit happens. Yeah. Literally shit happens. I think Kate Price. Got any advice? Uh, would you like to do some advice? Uh, well, this is an interesting one. This is from Anonymous. All right, Litz. I need some advice. Been with my missus for six years and she still hasn't told her dad about me. I'm white 
And she, she, he didn't. That's my fault. He I didn't type it that way. Hang on, I'm gonna have to redo that one <laughs> because fuck? he didn't type it that way. I'm what? I, I just I, I, let me just reread that. Right, right, right. <clears throat> I'm white. And she seek Indian. Oh no, he didn't do that either. <laughs> I'm white and she seek Indian. She is shit scared of her dad and will not tell him that I exist. We have to sneak around. Use uh, code word ten. Sneak around. Around nicely. Done. We all thought it. We all. We are, <laughs> like we are. The the heat has not helped this podcast today. There is no amount of aircon that can help the ridiculous levels of fuckery that's going on. <laughs> Uh, we have to sneak around like teenagers do uh, to do anything as a couple, even though I'm 26 and she's 27. I need some advice. Do I just fuck her off because uh, this, even though it's going to be shite, do I knock on the house? Oh, sorry. Uh, do I fuck her off because of this, even though it, that would be shite? Do I knock on the, the house and introduce myself? Oh. Or do I just nag the fuck out of her and wait until she grows enough bollocks to tell him about me? Any advice will be helpful because I'm completely stuck. Love the pod. Fuck Finn. Cheers. Anonymous. Thank you for seeking advice. Yeah, you got to insist that she tells him. Like, if you're sick of that shit, like, nah, don't just Waiting for women nowhere, to do but... stuff will just never get you anywhere. Take over. Option two. Knock on the door. Have a word. Rip the band-aid off. If she's not happy, it was never meant to be anyway. Six years. Her yeah. dad's a fucking idiot. No, he's just, got, he's just got his beliefs, hasn't he? He's just No, I mean, yeah. he doesn't know about him at all. Yeah, but you can do a very good job of hiding that. Yeah, she doesn't live at his house. Yeah. Mad. I mean, there you is... Know, she's there carrying is, on her life. Yeah, there is a cultural aspect that I think you may be... Fucking six years! Absolutely no reason for this! I think there is, obviously, the cultural... No, I know what. Sap. I don't know why, but I'm it's saying... It's very easy. I've been seeing right, a Zulu for a decade. <laughs> you haven't got a Carl, if you had about sneak fair. today... I feel like you're revved up for these. <laughs> yes. You're like, you're like we're, we're answering the question and Carl's going, don't worry guys, don't worry JJ, I've got this. It's your garden, do what the fuck you want. You're like, you're right in on every question. I was going to call it out, but it was noticeable You're like today. really in on them. Like You're like, come on Dan, let's get to the end of this fucking pod. <laughs> Easy Carl, Jesus I'm a fan Christ. of the Sikhs. Um, you're a fan of the Sikhs. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they're they meek people, aren't they? Oh, they're fun, they're sound. I like the Sikhs. Sikhs. <laughs> I think knocking on the door and be like, hi, Mr. Whatever it is. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> give her a deadline first, though, right? You yeah. gotta go, all right, you got Tomorrow. 30 days. I'm Tomorrow. knocking on the door in 30 days. You, got, oh. you gotta tell them. I, give it, I put it in minutes then. rather than days. 30 minutes. You, no, that's, <laughs> no, that's a bomb threat. <laughs> <laughs> You've got exactly. Ten seconds. She she That's won't be. Threat. She's she's bang out of order here because this is, at some point this has got to come out and it's been fucking well too long. You've got to just take it out of her hands. If it all goes that to shit and he's like, no, it's never going to happen. You're never going to see me daughter and she gets kicked like whatever. That, then that was always going to happen whenever it comes out. You're just prolonging the inevitable. Don't fuck it off. You can't fuck it off. You obviously love the girl and you want to make it work. So just turn up at his, take him, <laughs> take him a present. <laughs> Take him a traditional a present. Sikh present. A fucking bag of old Caesars. I'll Google it. A traditional <laughs> Sikh gift. Yeah. For someone like an ornament or yeah. something. Yeah. Just For someone but, who but loves Google. The Sikhs, yeah. He's going to Google. <laughs> yeah. So I've been banging your Sikh daughter <laughs> for six years. So here's a little elephant for your mantelpiece. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, uh, you're in a you're in a bad if you really love this girl, you're in a bad spot because if she's hidden you for six years, then what is else a, is she hiding? There is a fucking reason. Do you like yeah. disc plates, apparently? What? Loads of disc plates. What's yeah, it? if she's hiding this from the dad, what's she hiding from him? Yeah, exactly. How many Aces. dads has she actually got? Mm. <laughs> uh, right. There's a twelve inch double sided sarplo care pan. Whatever that is, get him that. Yeah, that'll do it. There's your solution. You didn't know about options or D. Or a slow you? cooker. <laughs> Get a slow cooker. Get no, him a slow cooker. Nothing says, I've been banging your daughter for six years better than... It's been a slow relationship. It's been slow and hot. Yeah, it's been a slow Learn cooker. Learn a traditional dance. <sighs> yeah, perform it for him. Knock on his door with the dance. Oh my God, yeah. That's what, that's what all Sikh dads want. Look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's in. That's all yeah. boy. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Option E. You. <laughs> do, do. <laughs> so funny, tell him. I've been banging your daughter. She's fit. Good luck with that, mate. You're having a fucking nightmare. Yeah, I th I think you've got to just knock and tell him. 
But don't tell her you're doing it. Don't let her unless you're doing it. Have you ever had any difficult difficulty with dads? Have you ever had any, like, any judgmental fathers just not liking you? I feel like it's an easy... Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's easy when we're comics. We don't... It's hard to maintain relationships with all our road work and, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Even with uh, the uh, girlfriend I had, you met her, uh, that I was with for years. That was a big problem for me when I, because I got stranded during the Iceland volcano, F U O Cool or what? I even know the fucking name of it, because I got stuck in Australia, and yeah, her, her dad and family had an intervention with her while I was in Australia, and I just returned to like life with a comedian. It's gonna be like this. They're gonna be stranded all around the world all the time. Oh, so the dad waited for an international <laughs> an seismic incident. event to be like yeah. this cunt's never coming home. <laughs> yeah, as yeah. all world plane travel was. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was all shut down. We like, can't even get home during volcanoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Comedians, pilots, <laughs> fuck them. <laughs> Anyone of any significance who has to travel for work, you want a really yeah. nice shopkeeper. Oh, yeah, mate. you just want a local life. You re- uh, Keep it simple. Honestly, if you want to get serious with someone, how you get on with their family is massively important. Maybe yeah. it doesn't, it shouldn't end things or anything, but it's so, like when, when I told... We didn't ask Laura's dad if like, we could have permission because it's old hat and we don't do that shit. It's fine. You can if you want, but it wasn't for us. Right. But we rang him to say, oh, we've just got engaged. But you knew you And he, in, his right? first you response knew. was like, brilliant. It's a no returns policy. It was great. Because <laughs> you sound, it's fun to uh, get on yeah. with your partner's in-laws. It's so important. Yeah. Well, so, I, think, I think as comics, I think we all blow it out of the water when we're there. I think we all give good parents. Very charming. When we're there. But, you know, when we're on the road... That's, Have you ever uh, been threatened? Like the dad threat with a girlfriend? I got threatened. Did you? By my first girlfriend I worked with. What, her dad threatened you? Not threatened. Like, yeah, yeah it was a threat, yeah. What did he say? I, like, if you go backwards through my my relationships, I've got the two most recent ones that a lot of our listeners know about. You've got the one that was never really official but was quite heavy. Mm-hmm. And then you've got the first one who you know about. So the most the, recent one, the, the the women who shall not be named. I just don't like names. No, no. You know what I mean, most recent one. I I've got steadily better at this because the most recent one, I got on with their parents like a fucking house on fire. I loved them. I could have gone for a pint with them without their their great. The ones before it was a little bit fractured at times, and they were always like, "Oh yeah, we kind of like you, but hey, hey." <laughs> the the first one, her mum clearly hated me. A little sister absolutely adored her ex-boyfriend. So she was always like, you're not him. Oh. No. And her dad, the first time I met him, he, he fed me chicken soup. And when she went to the toilet, he went, look, I'm never going to tell uh, who to date and who not to date, and I'll always be sound to them. But I swear to God, you ever do anything wrong and you won't be the first person I've put in hospital. <laughs> I was like, so did you make this yourself, your yeah? soup? Mm. I'd have threw that soup in his fucking face. Would you? No. <laughs> Carl, let's get this. I'd kill him <laughs> in my god. <laughs> I got threatened by my friend's girlfriend's dad. He said, um, we were sitting watching telly. He was like, that. she went to the toilet. He's like, you know, I'll just I'll drive you to the woods and we'll have a little chat. And that was it. And we just carried on watching the telly when she came back. What a low, what the fucking dad's, I mean, what? dad's being 16. fucking bed. 16. So it was obviously- wait, wait for the first... Like cheating or the first, no, like don't just preemptively like I'm a dad and this is what I definitely will do. Fuck off. No, I w- yeah. I would act <coughs> maniacal when my daughter wasn't around. <laughs> to if I was like I'd oh yeah I'd, I'd threaten them Go but then boys. laugh hysterically and say I'm only messing. Go bad boys. Just- Motherfucker, no. you least dirty. Yeah, least there dirty. you go. I ain't going bad at jail. Reggie, what am I red? No, I wouldn't do that. I'd just be like, she got a toilet. I'd be like, so you're getting on quite well. It's going well, aren't I? Like, you, you know, I'll literally like, I've I've made it. People have got away with it. <laughs> I'm only messing, don't worry about it. But they, yeah, buried for myself. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah don't, don't hear it on anything because I think it's be the next. <laughs> I'm only joking. scared of me. Yeah, I'll just be like that. Because then, don't if, you, I, don't if it ever goes to court, I, I've laughed, so it was a joke. 
And that's how yeah, that works. Yeah, that always works. That's, yeah. again, welcome to the Have yeah. A Word legal podcast. <laughs> and that is, you can take that to any yeah. courtroom. Yeah. Just make sure in life you laugh after whatever you say. And I'll murder your family. <laughs> <laughs> I'll burn your house down. If it's not a threat. We're laughing. <laughs> if you're in the garden and you cock out and you put an axe in someone's head, as long as you laugh, <laughs> you're fucking scoff for yeah. it. They just don't know mental. how to take a joke. <laughs> Lad, if you want to settle down with this girl, like you need to find out what's going on with this family. I would cut to the chase. Either take his advice, yeah. one of these. You can't be fucking around like this for much longer. Yeah, you know. Good luck with that. Um, I think that's a pod. I'm sweaty. We haven't uh, we haven't got any other stuff. I think we call it a pod. End of it. JJ, thanks for coming Ooh, in. Thanks for having me, guys. Can you fun. tell everyone uh, what your Instagram, Twitter, and all those handles are, where they can find you, and any, ah. any uh, content you want to promote, like specials or albums, where they can find it? Yeah, um, well, it's uh, JJ Whitehead, but JJ White Snake on a lot of social media, so on Instagram and stuff, because I was drunk when I signed <laughs> up for it. I didn't think it would be around for long. <laughs> so yeah, JJ Wade, take JJ Wade, you'll find me. And uh, yeah, I've got some albums out there. Uh, they're on everything, on iTunes and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I'm putting a lot of stuff up on Instagram lately, so. Wonderful. Make sure Join you in. follow JJ, like his stuff, share his stuff, tell your friends. Um, quickly, if you're coming to see me in September at Hot Water, I think it's the 18th, um, could you check your emails? You'll have got an email from Hot Water Comedy Club. It might have gone in your spam. They need to move some tickets to a different date. Uh, so check your your spam folder. If you've bought tickets to me to the September tour date, the Smasher tour date, have a little check. Not if you're at any of the other shows, that's fine. Just a Liverpool hot water day in September. Check your inbox and respond to the email. They're going to move some tickets around. It's all good. Still seeing the show. It's all gravy. There's been an extra date added in November because we've sold so well, but they just need to do a little bit of admin. So check your inbox. Um, tickets for the Haverweird live show at the arena. Still about, there's a few left. Uh, as if you watched last week's episode or listened, you'll know we opened up the very final seats of the arena. Phenomenal to be able to say that. They are on sale now. Once they are gone, they are gone. These are the very last seats on sale. Uh, they can get, you can get them from ticketquarter.co.uk or gigsandtours.com. I have no solo shows at the minute. Damn, that's going to be fun, man. That's uh, going to be a fun show for you guys. Oh it's going to be chaos. Killer. Um, as the year goes on, I'm going to put several sort of work in progress shows, Adam Rowan friends on, so do keep an ear out for that. And as we said earlier in the episode, me and Carl are launching a football show to coincide with the World Cup, and later this week we will launch our Fantasy Premier League to sort of soft launch that, uh, to open up the sports wing of Have A Word, which has been a long time coming. Carl, have we got any music? Uh, yeah, we have. Um, this is from Ignite Mares. They are a three-piece alternative punk rock band from South Wales. Uh, and their tune is called Letters to Laura. Wonderful. Uh, as you all know by now, if you are a YouTube viewer, you don't get the music because copyright will fuck us. Uh, but that does go out on the audio version. So enjoy that if you're the audio. If you're a YouTube guy, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Tell everyone about us. Uh, and if you're not a Patreon yet, you're missing out on the best Patreon on planet Earth. Cheers, JJ. Appreciate you. Thanks, Thanks man. Me, guys. Thanks. Fun. Au revoir. Bye, Felicia.